From Champaign, Illinois, this is the Jumping the Rail podcast with your hosts, Mark Redmond and Mike Nartolinas. All right, and welcome to episode 25 of the Jumping the Rail podcast. This is Mark Rebman coming to you from Champaign. I am joined, as always, by our producer, Marco. Marco, how you doing? All right, how you doing? Hold on a minute. We have a... Something's playing at... Oh, it's those. I got it. It's always, there we go. It's nice we got it. it. So, yeah, guest headphones were ah. cranked up, and since they're not in somebody's head, they're ah. feeding out. All right. Let's just blame Menders. Just blame somebody. Menders. That's it. No, it's actually my fault this time. Yeah. Uh, well, shout out to Menders. We'll blame you anyway. Uh, so, like I said, this is Mark Rebin, and we are coming to you from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, our usual tag team partner, Mike Nargelinas, is not here in the studio with us. He is uh, attending the final T-ball game of the official fire marshal of Jumping the Rail, Murray Nargelinas. Yep, yep, that little boy. Yeah, but he should be calling in sometime around 7-ish to just put his two cents on everything. But we are not alone in the studio because we have Reed Zilla with us. It's our yeah. buddy Kyle Reed. Kyle, how's it going, buddy? Good, how are you guys? Oh, not too bad. Thanks for uh, sitting in, filling in Narja's chair for uh, for one day. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> You're looking good, too. You got the uh, the red Narja Mania t-shirt on. Yeah, it's Let's show everybody real quick. Everybody, you can see the video now. You can see the T-shirt. Look at that. <laughs> we don't have our lights up yet. That's why we're not fully live, but you should see the shirt and right. see it does fit. Yeah, I have posted Looks a picture sweet. also on our Facebook page of that with the Terramana. Did we bring the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, the Kyle, Terramana has arrived. Kyle show everybody brought, the bottle. Kyle brought the guest host fee of one bottle of Terramana uh, with him this evening. So... Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to get into quite a bit from the last few days. And uh, we are scheduled to have uh, calling in Camaro Jackson from Zero One USA. Uh, that should be in about a half hour or so. But uh, I guess we'll start off with uh, what was going on last night. Kyle, did you watch Raw last night? I did not get a chance to watch Raw. You okay. Fill me in. All right. Well, it's pretty easy to, to follow. Basically, what we're going to talk about is uh, one Mr. John Cena. I did uh, watch him talking. He had the uh, the big 20th uh, anniversary celebration last night. Which Hello, was, Dwayne. Yeah, I saw Dwayne was on there before you even hit record, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dwayne, still uh, still fired up about the Goonies remake, Dwayne? Oh, is that where you saw the info? Yep. Uh, yeah, well, I got to... I got to go with Dwayne. If there is going to be a remake of Goonies, that's a bad move. I think I a sequel I'm cool with. Even a, a a sequel with a different set of kids in the same, you know, another right. adventure would be cool. Yeah. Or the current kid, the old kids having to go back or something. I don't right. care, but. Even Goonier. Just to say. remake it. Yeah, it just, nah, just doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, there's certain movies. I mean, let's be honest, man. Corey Feldman's living off them fucking dollars, too. So, you know, oh, don't yeah. take yeah. away from him. Between that and the Either Lost that or Boys. maybe he's involved in this. And he, yeah, and there's going to be a new Lost Boys. I saw that. They're doing that. Oh, and no, I've heard there's a Gremlins sequel. So a Gremlins yeah. 3, I've heard. So, well, who knows? I, I wonder if that's Corey's plan, is to just license all of these movies he was in to get another paycheck out of it. And who I'm knows? I'm not sure how He's, much license he owns on those, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not savvy to the business. But uh, usual movie talk aside, let's get into last night. And, uh, yeah, they had uh, John Cena's big celebration. He, uh, Vince brought him out. He cut the big promo and uh, the usual... You know, seen a promo, yeah. get the fans involved and everything. It's all about the fans. All about the fans, you know, uh, before he goes back and does Peacemaker 3 or whatever it is he's got coming up. And uh, there was a lot of interactions backstage with uh, some of the younger talent. And uh, one thing that stuck out to me was the video package they did. They did this probably five-minute-long video package of, like, all those highlights with people, like, sending in videos of well wishes and everything. And what stuck out is there were actually three AEW people that got really? videos on. It was Jericho, Danielson, and Big Show. Nice. So 
that makes me wonder if that's uh, Stephanie's doing now that she's in charge. If she's kind of oh, I'm sure sticking a toe in the old forbidden door, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it sounds like there's going to be some changes there. Triple H, I guess, has taken has taken NXT back over. And that's a good uh, move. what? That's a good move. Yes, very good move. And uh, yeah, then Bruce Pritchard's in charge. <laughs> Marco, <laughs> the Terramana is open. Cheers. And, Oh, he's not even getting the glass this time. He's just gonna, he's gonna do it uh, bandito style. But it's a good thing I had some something to eat before we started. I came here to drink. Ah, that's good. <laughs> that's good stuff. As he damn near dies. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> I, Nard just commented. I heard the pop. <laughs> I'll have to find that and make a little loop out of it. We can use it just as a button on our uh, soundboard. It's, it's Terramana, which is not a cheap pop. To no. paraphrase Mick Foley, but uh, it's the good, it's the good stuff. The people's tequila, which keeps us uh, keeps us fueled up for these lubricated. Podcasts. So let's talk about. Uh, we kind of went into what happened last night. Not a lot to talk about, you know. But uh, it does make me want to discuss Cena a little bit. Just how were you a fan of John Cena, Kyle? Yes, I was. Like super. Like, did you dress up like him? No, absolutely not. No. I have a friend. Liar. I got one of my best friends in the world who I used to work with up in up north, and he was a super fan of John Cena. And he he's not as old as I am. He's about probably five six years younger, and he went to a, some meet and greet, and he went with the wristbands and the t shirt and all that. Like, come on, all right? <laughs> I mean, I love the guy, but gee, come on, it's <laughs> you're a grown man. You, yeah, I like the thumb and thugonomics more than any other version. Oh, that of was Cena. your favorite, yeah. See, I was lukewarm on Cena for until about oh twenty oh eight. I'd say about the time that he got hurt and they came back. I mean, he always I always thought he was good. Just you know, he was just kind of getting the old uh, forced down your throat kind of thing. You know, like kind of what fans thought about Roman later on. Yeah. But it's uh, I wanted to bring this up because Dwayne was <laughs> being kind of kind of bitchy on the Facebook today. Talking about John Cena, saying he didn't understand, he doesn't think that John Cena is the GOAT, which is a fair take, but he made it sound like it was implausible that he could be considered in that discussion. And I don't think he is, personally, but I told Dwayne that I, there's a case that can be made for it. I wrote down a lot of his achievements. Well, yeah, achievements aside, you know, you know if you uh, listeners remember, we had a discussion about the GOAT a few episodes ago and I had a, I laid out my own personal criteria for what goes into that. It was work rate, uh, match quality, drawing money, uh, good promos, all this. But the one that I had at the end of the thing was positive impact on the business. And I think that's where Cena could make a case for, for go talk because he's always yeah. represented the business. Well, he's all, he's never gotten in trouble. No right. womanizing, no drugs, no arrests or anything. And then with the, I forget what the number they said, 650-something Make-A-Wish. 650 things. is the number that I looked up this morning. That's, that's remarkable, you know. So he's uh, he's done a whole lot to really enhance the, the image of pro wrestling by doing all that stuff. Right. So that's what I think. Like If you're just going off of in-ring, yeah, Flair, Michaels, Guerrero, Triple H, all those, I and think those guys have seen And that's it. only in 18 years of him doing it. Yeah. Uh, the Make-A-Wishes. His first one was in two thousand and four. So yeah. yeah, that's that's about right. That's about that's when he turned babyface. That's when yeah. the kids started liking him. So I mean, that's a lot per yeah. year. Yeah, for Make a Wish. It's uh, it's impressive. Very impressive. And uh, <clears throat> and then so, which that, one of us is going to need a wish? <laughs> <laughs> we want John Cena. <laughs> Actually, you probably could qualify could, somehow, could, couldn't could you, use there, Kyle? A wish right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. And we're going to get, actually, John Cena is the topic of our top 10 Tuesday this week, which we'll hold off on until the end, the usual spot. That way, Narge can argue with you. Yeah. But basically, it's going to be the greatest uh, Cena matches. So I wrote down five. You wrote down five? Okay. So uh, what is, I'm just going to ask you, what's your favorite? Not not the greatest Cena match, but what's your favorite John Cena match? The CM Punk one. Oh, Money in the Bank yeah. 2011? Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. I actually, that's one I actually bought a pay-per-view for. Uh Back in 2011, usually I just waited till the next night to see what happened, but right. I actually decided to pony up the money for that, that one. That was definitely worth watching. Yeah, definitely. But there's so many good ones, and we'll, like I said, we'll get into that when we get the list going. But uh, 
I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen him have a bad match. I've never seen a you know, horrible match, no, to where it's I, not worth viewing. Yeah, even if it's not a, he never had like a five star. Well, that's not true. There's a couple of things that would have been considered five stars, but I mean, for the most part, he was solid in the ring. You know, never, never hurt anybody. Never hurt anybody. He hurt, got hurt a couple of times himself, but uh, yeah, he was a good worker. And yeah, so I never had an issue with John Cena in the ring, but. Uh, Marco, you didn't watch a lot of Cena in the ring. You know more from the movies and all the stuff outside. Yeah, I mean, though, oddly enough, uh, my first ever experience with wrestling at all, live, real wrestling, you know, the going to an event was because of him. He was, uh, he and his then tag team partner Don Marie mm-hmm. were at the University of Illinois bookstore one day, and I used to work on the fourth floor in one of the departments, and I went down there every day. It was just like my thing. Go to the bookstore, check out computer books. I know I'm weird. <laughs> but I walk in, there's this set of long tables, and these people sitting there. I'm like, well, what the fuck's this? What's going on here? And somebody says, oh, there's a pro wrestler. I said, oh, you know, I mean, you guys know me. I was kind of shrugging it off a little bit. But I was like, but my kids like this shit. Who are these people? You know, and oh, they're, 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 they're. And I meet them. It's John Cena and Don Marie. And I'm, I'm guessing this is, you know, this is what you call a house show, right? Yeah. Number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, I'm guessing this is very early in his career. It was. I okay, remember, I think I, 2000, 2001 is my guess. I remember the show because I was there. It was actually November of 02. Okay. Okay. So uh, I go up and I, okay, cool. And I get autographs. You know, like I get a picture and I get autographs by people. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. And uh, Cena asked me, he goes, he goes, have you ever been to a WWE match? And I'm like, yeah, nope. I said, and I got, I got, you know, me and a woman and three kids, and I really can't afford this stuff. I mean, I, you know, it just wasn't my thing, and I couldn't afford it. He goes, well, I'll tell you what, and hook me up with passes for floor tickets and everything right then in their spot. Wow. Took the kids. We were on the, we were like 15, 20 feet from the ring. You know, it was a cool experience. Of course, John Cena at the time was who? You know, he was not anybody. He was a starting guy, basically. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, none of the kids knew who the hell he was either. Well, so I think it was, yeah, so I, I, I got a autographed copy of a photo from John Cena for, I think it was AJ, and I got one, because AJ was into it, and then Josh, a good friend of ours, Josh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, if I'm not mistaken, and Narge will correct me later if he hears any of this, but I'm pretty sure that when Josh passed away and all this stuff came in, I think the John Cena went to... Kyler and Narge. Oh, wow. I, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that autograph photo went there. Okay. Because it was never going to do anything for me here. Right, right. And, so. and not for nothing, I couldn't see where Don Marie might have gotten your attention. Actually, she didn't. <laughs> I, yeah. I wouldn't enter. There was a there was another uh, smaller blonde at the time that they wrestled. The, it was like a team tag, but, you know, guy, girl on each side, tag right. team. The other girl I thought was more attractive I for believe, whatever reason. If my memory is right, that was Tori Wilson. Mm, yeah, I, I don't think, know. Because I think it was Dawn and Cena against Tori and Kidman. In that okay. Match. Yeah. No so, idea. I, I mean, mean you, I, I, I have drank a lot of I'm, tequila since I'm then. I'm not saying that for your benefit, Marco, because that's probably all real weird like information to you. But yeah, that was actually a hell of a house show, I remember. That's the first time I got to see Brock live. I saw Big Show. Uh yeah, Brock, I remember. Big Show, I don't for some reason. Uh, they wrestled each other in that show. Well, then I just don't remember him. <laughs> but uh, so. yeah, the old cliche, TV doesn't do him justice, is 100% true with Big Show. When you, when big you old son of a bitch, isn't he? Huge. So big. But That's uh, right. I'll be honest with you. He's not doing TV much justice. Have you seen that Netflix show? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very oh, that true. That was just like, I, I suffered through it. The Big Show Because show. it just felt like it, it, it felt like it should be, what do you call it, good like family clean, clean watching, fun. just that type of thing. But man, there were so many parts of like, oh come on, guys, you got to do better. Steve Urkel was the second banana on this show. Come on, it's but he didn't play. <laughs> eh. He played. Oh, he you wasn't know, Urkel. He was just Jaleel White as Jaleel White as a what is his promoter or his manager or something. Yet he wasn't doing his, shit. I think. I think, just, I think it was or maybe just, his, just his friend. Maybe yeah. yeah I don't know. Because that's a that's a bosom buddies kind of friendship. They're just. Totally bizarre. Floyd Fisher says Cena visited the Don Moore Boys and Girl Club when he was prototype. Okay, yeah, prototype Marco was his original gimmick in the uh, in the Indies, and then right before he got to WWE. Oh, okay, all right. But uh, that that seems on. Brand, BJ says that show with the Big Show was a little fun, just badly written. 
<laughs> I, I'm not going to disagree with that, BJ. That's kind of the thing. Was like, it was just like, y'all can do better. A lot of it was y'all can do better. But I did like the precocious little girl, the yeah. one that's always like, like pulling stunts. Yeah. yeah, but she's always pulling stunts and she's conning everybody. I liked her character. She was funny. <laughs> Although I'm like, my kid act like that. Whoop. Right. <laughs> yeah. So usually, wrestlers doing TV shows is not a good idea. I'll take you back to. Uh, I think it was tag team with Jesse Ventura and Roddy Piper in the early nineties. That that's don't like, remember it. I think it was just a pilot that didn't get picked up. Oh, I've seen a few movies with wrestlers in them, and mm. I, I'll be honest, some of them they're good. I mean, we 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 have a a, a thinning of the herd of action stars from the eighties nineties yeah. where we had all these big blockbuster guys. So now we've got The Rock. Cena's doing some stuff, although Cena pretty much, except I think he did like the the, the Marine or something. But something like that. But yeah, otherwise, right. generally, he's just been doing basically comedy a lot. Yeah. Whole lot of comedy. Not all of it's good. Uh, the uh, Who's the other guy? He uh, he just played the one with the taxi cab. Oh, Batista. Batista, right? And he's a former wrestler, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I like him. I like him. So that's that's always fun to I, watch. I believe you mean Stuber, where he was riding with Stuber, Uber yes. Driver. It was an Uber driver. Yes, taxi cab. Yes, Stuber. <laughs> Uh, and that was a funny as hell movie. And he, he's able to play the straight guy against yeah. it, which is perfect. Yeah. But And Batista does a lot of those. He was in one of the Bond movies. He was in right. He was in a few of those action movies like that yeah. as, the, as the muscle. He was, and he was right. Drax. He was Drax. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, they, pulling some of these guys from wrestling, if they've got the real chops. Mm-hmm. you know. And I've always said this about watching pro wrestling when these guys are, you know, when they're talking and they're, you know, doing interviews and they're doing all this. It's so put on. It's so bad. That it's good to see some of these guys can actually act. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing with, that's why I think most of the wrestlers you see go into acting are the ones that came from WWE where they have to learn a script and right. do all that stuff. Not a lot of AEW wrestlers are doing the actual scripted television or movies or anything. Everybody, Mark is now going to take a drink of Terramana for you. Dun, dun, dun. Woo. Ah. There we go. Just wanted to make sure if he was going to spew, we wanted you all to see it. <laughs> ah, she's making Mr. Me Reed. Like a, make me look like a chump here, Marco. So I haven't, honestly, I haven't seen a lot of John Cena movies. I've seen, I think I saw The Marine and the one where he was a fireman with children. Uh, that one was just, I, Andrea Lynch, who listens to us, yeah. she's huge, huge fan of Cena. Yes. And I think that was one of those that she really liked. My favorite movie with him in it, and he is not by any means the star, is the one um, stepdad, stepfather. Uh, I know what you're talking about. It's Mark Wahlberg. Name. Oh, uh, uh, Daddy's Home. Daddy's Home yeah, too. Yeah, he was John good in that Cena. One. John Cena for the the bit he was in there was phenomenal. But that was one of the better movies he's been in. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I like him I think in Trainwreck. Trainwreck. He was he was funny in Trainwreck. Yeah, I yeah. That one. And I thought Cockblockers was just plain uh, fucking ignorant. Th- that one I haven't seen. Oh, uh, that I was. Seen it either. I you know, and you got the concept of it, you know, all that, but it just felt like I don't know, weird. Uh, to make a comment that my brother will enjoy, I think my favorite acting I've seen him do was. Oh on... yes, yes, yes. Wes is correct. I forgot about that. The superhero show that John Cena's in. Oh, Peacemaker. 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 Now yes. that. John Cena is fucking amazing. Yeah. The show is amazing. If you haven't seen the show, go get HBO Max, I think it is. But it is well worth it. Season one ended a few months ago. and Just for the opening the, dance sequence. Yeah. Well, the dance sequence. The soundtrack. If you like 80s-style hard rock, oh, yeah. and I'm not talking Judas Priest and metal so much, but just hard rock, this thing is peppered with that stuff mm-hmm. throughout. All the action sequences there, it's very much a send-up of... 80s action hero type stuff, but there's a lot of dumbass shit in there. Like yeah. Cena plays a moron yes. who just happens to be gifted with being a superhero. Plus, he has an eagle named Eagly. Eagly, like, Eagly is awesome. You kind of got that clue about him in Suicide Squad on how he's going to be acting. Yeah, right. Uh, but right. But no, like I got saying. I think bef- other well, than- and that's where it came from. Was the yeah. Suicide Squad that character exactly? Yeah. yeah. But other than Peacemaker, I think the best acting he's done was he did an episode of Psych. Remember that show from USA? I do. I he remember played, the show. He played the blonde's older brother in the Army. Okay. It was right around the time of the Marine because the uh, the guy that played the bad guy in the Marine, uh, Robert Patrick. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. He was on that episode. The of Terminator? Psych. Yeah. T-1000. Right, the on. T-1000, yes. But he was on that episode also, so it was 20, 
I want to say yeah, 2009, 2010. But he was really good in that, too. And that was the first time I really saw him act outside of WWE. Right. And uh, BJ, remind me, uh, Cena was in the new, the latest Fast and the Furious. Yes. As, I think, it's Vin Diesel's brother. Yeah. Who supposedly died and whatever the fuck. So right, right. he'll be in the next one. And Dwayne is not wrong. 12 rounds was decent. I believe that might be the first Cena movie I saw. Mm. Uh, it was one of those, you know, he had to, comp- I, if I remember, and Dwayne will correct me, uh, I believe that was the one where he had to complete a bunch of little chores or yeah. somebody died or it something. His, right? It was his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was I, well done. I didn't watch it just because it had Johnny Fairplay in it, and I can't stand that guy. I don't know who that is. He, is he a wrestler, he, too? He was on Survivor, and then he oh. tried to worm his way into pro wrestling and as a, like a manager. He was a little weaselly But guy. he wormed his way into a movie. Yeah, but... I still can't stand the guy. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't stand the look of him, huh? I don't like the look of his face, which is true. He looks he looks like a weasel, but I don't want to get sued, so I'll be nice. This time. This time. Let's see. So, uh, if you hear the pitter-patter of little claws on the floor in here, it's because our, the associate, co-producer. our associate producer, Scrappy, is uh, kind of making the rounds here. And so there might be some, hopefully not barking, but he he's a loose cannon, so you never know. Uh, let's see. Wes, I would agree with you on that. I would. We have a, a listener, Wes Pinkley, who says, Cena does funny well, and that's hard to do. Getting into the fields is kind of easy. My props go out to him. Yeah, that's, that's a that's different a take. take on it. Yeah. I think that's good. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Marco. Better actor, John Cena or Dwayne Johnson? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> And Better everything is Dwayne Johnson, yeah. except, except John Cena is, I think, although I don't know this, because I, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, because I find YouTube, five or ten minute little short attention span shit works for me a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Cena and all the Make-A-Wish stuff. Yes. Yeah. I mean, 650 you said, right? Yep. That's a lot of fucking wishes. The Rock does it a little differently. I see a lot of videos of him where high schools contact him, you know, hey, you know, we'd like you to sponsor this or be here to this. And he's given football equipment to football teams in poor, you know, high schools. Yeah. I think he's done things for his own alma mater at different times. Right. Uh, you know, he's given people vehicles that were like part of his history, like before like his, he ever made it. Right. His like old his neighbor. Double, I think he got yeah. There was a guy that I think he kind of looked at as a father figure when he was really young, mm-hmm. who did a lot of things and took him to do things on. You know, so Dwayne Johnson, me, is. Yeah. Philanthropic in many ways. He just may not do the make a wish as right. much. So, well, hell, he bought you know. Tamina Snuka a house not too long ago. Yeah, Tamina is one of the uh, ladies in WWE. And okay, apparently he surprised her with a house. That's awesome. I mean, I think he's a I think he's a stellar person, and oh, I've yeah. never heard or seen anything different. And I'll be honest with you. Okay, him and Kevin Hart can make a movie every six months. <laughs> I will go see it. I will enjoy it. I have no out in my mind and i'm pretty sure they're in the new dc super pets coming out yeah, i know I he so. i know he is right so the two of them that's what five movies they've been uh, in together now yeah and it was a, intelligence it, this, uh the jumanji movies uh-huh uh this super pets one and then i think there was another one but there I was another one yeah somebody help us kevin hart's and everything he's he's like michael mcdonald right. in the 80s you said central intelligence right yeah yes yes uh, either way, though. Which yeah. that was a fun movie. The two of them together are great. So, yes. anyways, we should probably circle back around to the discussion of wrestling, <laughs> not just wrestlers. I mean, we're probably having fun with this, and if there's ladies listening, they're probably going, I love that wrestler. Right. But you guys have some stuff to talk about that mattered, like, in the world of wrestling this week. Yeah. So, uh, there actually, there's something else I wanted to bring up. Uh, I mentioned on the uh, Facebook that there was a, the, a subject that might get the uh, spicy debate going. And this is uh, from my brother. He sent me a message, and uh, he just, it was about intergender wrestling. And I wanted to get your take because you're not a fan, like uh-huh. a wrestling fan. And then, Kyle, I know you're not as a severe fan like me or Narge would be. And so you're, you're basically saying women wrestlers versus men wrestlers? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And I want to get your, I want to get you guys' take because you're not like mm-hmm. hardcore into it. So my brother is, uh, He's not as into the wrestling as I am nowadays. He was back in the day. But as it goes on, he sent me a message saying, basically, to nutshell that he doesn't understand the appeal of intergender wrestling. And, and he... Well, I mean, I could go all cheese ball and say, if I was the guy, I'm totally into it. 
But you know, well, yeah, but like he doesn't see the the allure of watching a guy beat up the on a woman, the okay. Basically. So and I I could kind of I can kind of get that that, I, that viewpoint. Yeah. Um, so number one, and I I say this as the caveat to everything else, pro wrestling isn't an actual athletic competition. So therefore, it's more about style, grace, technique, uh, athleticism. Okay. And being able to sell whatever's going on. So, like, if her job is to flip the guy over her shoulder, she has to sell it and he has to sell it. That's it. So, to me, I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. And I think it would actually be kind of cool to see more of it. Especially because now you can think of somebody like Ronda Ronda Rousey, (laughs) who is, uh, you know, noted for being an actually pretty prolific fighter. She's a physically, you know. judo, all that stuff. Right. She does that all. (laughs) <laughs> Our associate uh, producer is trying to give uh, Kyle a back scratch. Among um, other things, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Scrap me down. But. <laughs> That's for my wife. Where's the, where's the video? <laughs> Hang on, let me turn that back on here. Here, buddy. Now, now he's going to go there. there we go. Well, just in case. Hold on a minute. There we go. We'll if turn anybody, on the Narge cam. If anybody's there getting we go. me Scrappy, you can get on the, the show, TV now. Scrappy. Climb up Kyle's back. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave that on for a little while. That way, in case Scrappy. <laughs> there he is. I can see him. Look at that. You're on TV. Uh. But so I think the intergender competition or wrestling, whatever, I think it's fantastic because you have a chance to take Ronda Rousey, who has a lot of credibility as a fighter, and put her against a guy. Now, I wouldn't put, you know, people that are so mismatched. Like, I, there was a, a, a men's match recently where the one guy's like 7'3", and the other guy's like 5'11", you know? Right, right. And that, I don't want to see that with men and women necessarily because I think now you're just not just talking about intergender. You're also talking about extreme mismatches yeah. where there's zero believability in it. Yeah. But I think, you know, Ronda Rousey against uh, the, the American dream guy, Cody Rhodes, Cody. when he gets back would be an interesting one, right? Something like that. And I think it would draw people in because they'd be like, wow, especially the way WWE markets things, yeah. they'd be able to sell this to maybe a crowd of people that are like, wait, wait a minute, huh? What a woman's going to wrestle a man. Yeah. That maybe don't care, but they're going to tune in for this. Well, WWE tends to, it doesn't do the traditional intergender wrestling. I think mainly because they're a publicly traded company and it's a PR thing and in, the, in their board of directors vision. But right, like, right. AEW, I think they, they would do it. They haven't done a whole lot of it so far. GCW does a lot of it. Uh, Zero One does a lot of it. Uh, a lot of the indies do and, uh, I don't think it's the hold for hold that gets a lot of people worked up. It's the strikes. It's like when they show like a guy will whack a lady with right. a forearm or a punch or a kick or something. We have yeah. a problem with China fighting in a Royal Rumble with multiple men in the nineties, or was that early two thousands? That was the late nineties, early two thousands. But yeah, I was never a big China fan. But that's beside the she point. She was her. She was her own like a product of her own making. Also, though, she was very different from all the rest of the women yeah. in oh, yeah. the, the a, organization at the Amazon. time. She was but, completely but still intergener- gender, Yeah. You know, yeah. But... Right. But again, like he said, she was, she was on Amazon. She was a right. huge woman. So people bought it based on that. Whereas women that are average size against men that are even average size, there's generally a five or six inch height distance difference. And that, I think that messes with people's heads. Right. Right. And I uh, think with Ronda Rousey, Tessa Blanchard, Taya Valkyrie, those are women that could easily match up with a majority of the men in wrestling. Right. right. And I'll even go further. I'll say Charlotte Flair could do it. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the thing to remember also with intergender wrestling, most of these women that are doing the intergender were trained by guys, and they know how to how to take these shots and how to give them and everything. What took me a while to get used to, and I'm desensitized to it now because I was so, I've watched so much of it, is when a, there's a man and a woman in a death match. Oh, no. I was in attendance for one where basically, you know, bleeding and chairs and light tubes. That was the first few times I did it. I will be honest. It was uncomfortable to watch. But, yeah, it's, that's kind of where it was kind of pushing it for me. It draws a line. It draws somewhere. it draws a line, yeah. But, uh, I mean, these, these chicks are tough. And a lot of times they want to do this stuff just to prove, A, how tough they are. And because they consider themselves one of the boys, you know. But it's... Uh, like I said, it's a slippery slope. It's everybody's got different opinions on these things, and uh, like I said, I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Is that Camaro? I can't read. <laughs> my, my vision is not well. It's just 
All right. All right. Let's get them in here and see what we got. All right. So and right on, right on time too. All right. So we're waiting for the audio to kick in. All right. Connecting and unmute. All righty. All right. I believe we are now joined on the phone by uh, a guy that I got to catch this weekend, Mr. Camaro Jackson. Uh, Camaro, is that you, buddy? Uh, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you fine. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Uh, thanks for coming on with us. Uh, where are we talking to you from? St. Louis. Ah, St. Louis. I'm a, as a lifelong Cubs fan, I have a middling affection for St. Louis as far as their sports teams go, but beautiful city. <laughs> hey, they have an arch. What does Chicago have? Well, they got... Because they don't even have the Sears Tower. They have the anymore. beam, right? The ball, the they got super the beam, ball. Yeah. The bean, yeah. That big old bean. So, uh, Camaro, we start every uh, every show with the same question. Uh, how did you get into pro wrestling, like as a fan? Um, I think was, I just saw it one day on TV, and I think any little like kid. Um, I just like the destruction and chaos of it. Like the first match I rem- I vividly remember seeing, it was The Rock and Kurt Angle. And then like The Rock was had Angle in the sharpshooter trying to break his legs off, break nice. his back in half. Nice. And that was nice. like 2000? Uh, sounds about right. I think they had a few around 2000, 2001. But, uh, but no, that's a, that was a hell of I remember that match. Was, uh, I think that's when Angle won the belt from... But, uh, mm-hmm. yep. But, uh, but yep. yeah, I mean, Angle was so good, though. It was, I remember when he showed up and then he just started running through everybody. And it just, it was amazing because he came in straight, pretty much straight out of the Olympics. So he just caught on to the pro game so, so easy. It was, it didn't seem fair. It wasn't fair. That dude is really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so was that, uh, was Angle like your first, like your first favorite guy? Or, uh, my first favorite guy was definitely The Rock. Uh, uh, dude, so do you remember um the 7-Eleven cups they used to sell, like the big wrestler cups? Oh, yeah. I, I, I still have mine. It was The Rock. Uh, nice. I never I never used it, but I still have mine. It was The Rock. Very nice. You'll get along great with our producer. His The Rock is his guy. Yes, The Rock <laughs> is definitely my favorite in the entire industry. Now, to be fair, Marco nice. doesn't know a whole lot about wrestling, so he knows The Rock because he's everywhere. Oh, dude, yep, he's... I only know him because he's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, Camaro, I uh, I didn't get the chance to talk to you this past weekend in Mattoon. I was honestly I was running behind, so I got there right before the show started. But uh, you had a hell of a match with uh, Jake Lander in Mattoon uh, to kick off the show, which surprised me. Then I found out later you were going to another show afterwards. So how are you feeling after this weekend? Because I got to imagine it's got to take a toll on you to go from one show, then drive multi- like several hours, and then get right back to it again as soon as you get there. I was very banged up. Um, so when I got – so, like, the wrestling part of it was fine, but sitting in the car for a couple of hours, I'm like, okay, my body's got me stiff again. Mm-hmm. And trying to re-warm up again, I, it was non-existent. In the middle of my match, the second show I went to, in the middle of my match, I caught a mad cramp in my bicep, my left bicep. And I swear to God, I'm like, oh, my goodness, did I just pull something? Did I tear something? I'm like, oh, well, that's what I get trying to be a super wrestler. But, no, I'm I'm, I'm fine now. Um, just was very banged up the next day, very banged up. Sure. So how often do you do that uh, double shot in one in one night? Is that kind of a regular thing for you, or is it uh, just every now and then? If, if I have to, I'll do them. Um, I, it's rare. I'll probably do probably two a year, maybe. But um, for the most part, if I have to do them, I'll do them. I love doing them. I enjoy doing them. Yeah. Because if I remember, I think the last time Zero One was in Mattoon, you had the same deal, but it was the other way around. You were scheduled to come to Mattoon for the second part of it. Mm-hmm. Then, then you wound up getting uh, getting an ankle injury, if I heard right. Is that right? Mm-hmm. right. Yep. So uh, talk about that. Like, what was like? Did you was it a sprain or a roll or uh, what happened? I had landed funny. Uh, so I had was getting 
going to get suplexed outside to the uh, floor, but I was going to land on the apron. I just landed funny. Hmm. That's all. It was a little scare. Yeah. And it like the it was one of those things where it happened, then like a few days later, I was fine. But I, I lucked out because I thought it was something worse. Because at first, I couldn't um couldn't really get. I was really walk on it. Couldn't take my boot off. But after a few days, I was right back to me. Awesome. I'm like, oh, okay, it was just a freak accident. Okay, yeah, because that's what you always see in wrestling. Is that's where the injuries happen. Is just the the freak things. It's not anything crazy or anything. It's like. Somebody will plant wrong, or they'll land a little funny, and then that's when, that's when shit happens. Yeah, but it was nothing too crazy. Good, good. Because uh, I was glad to get to see you Saturday. Uh, it's actually funny. You sat on my foot at one point when you were on the floor. <laughs> it was uh, when you were selling. You were selling the leg after uh, you took your boot off on the floor, and you were sitting on my foot. So my my wife got it. My wife got a picture of it. I yeah, think I, yeah. The picture <laughs> makes it look like he's just trying to give you a little bit of a friendly shoulder rub. <laughs> but, no, but no, that was that was that was entertaining. That was fun. That was, uh, that was actually my second zero one show I was at, and uh, the first one I actually had like the really good seats at ringside for. So it was it was a lot of fun. Cool, nice. So. Along with Zero One, uh, some of our listeners don't know a whole lot about uh, the local scene. That's what one of the things we try to do around here because we're based out of Champaign. Uh, mm-hmm. Along with Zero One, where else do you usually uh, work at? So, um, along with Zero One in St. Louis, I'm with Glory Pro, uh, St. Louis Anarchy, um, World League Wrestling, uh, WOW, uh, Harley Races Up School. Nice. Um, Dynamo Pro Wrestling. Um, I'm sometimes, well, I'm, when I'm in Kansas City, I go to Journey Pro and Central States Wrestling, formerly known as uh, DWF. Okay. Uh, trying to think of some more places I go to regularly. I'm probably leaving something out. I'm sure I am. Uh, next weekend, I'll be debuting at Iron Spirit. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Those are the places I go to. That's that regularly. Those are my regular places I attend. Okay. Uh, how long have you been in the business for, Camaro? Five years. Five years. So I'm just I'm trying to get my uh, my years right. Did you ever have the chance to meet Harley Race? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was- so it's in 2013. I did a camp for him before I actually started like wrestling. I did a camp. Uh, did a weekend camp, and I met Harley Race. Uh. Bob Eaton, uh, who else was there? I think it was just those two that like people recognize. Yeah, I have, I have a picture of Harley. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you if our regular co-host Narch was here, he'd be picking your brain about Bobby Eaton because that's his one of his favorite guys. But that's his guy. <laughs> that's his guy. So that's that's awesome. Uh, I got uh, I heard something that the NWA is going to be running at the Chase again sometime soon is that something that you plan on reaching out to the uh the office there about maybe getting the shot there or i've sent the email um i've been tweeting on social media those bastards better book me or it's gonna be hell okay man i gotta imagine being a st louis guy the chase has to be the top of your list of places that oh you work. dude that's all my grandparents talked about when i was a kid man Whenever I used to watch wrestling, they used to always talk about the chase. So like, that's that's something on my bucket list, man. That's something like, it's it's, it's something I thought that that was something on my bucket list because at first it wasn't going to happen, but like, since they started running, I'm like there. I'm like, oh well, okay, this is the possibility now. Nice. So like, I'm really persistent and eager to do it. Like, it needs to happen. Like, that's just something for me personally. Yeah, that yeah. were like, oh man, that, that's a huge check off my list. Like, oh, oh my goodness, like my family. This is all my family talked about when I was a kid. Yeah. Now I'm doing it. So yeah, yeah. We had uh, Joe Galley on about a month ago, uh, the play-by-play guy for the NWA. And uh, yeah, we were talking about the first time they were at the Chase last year when they did the mm-hmm. women's show, and then they did the I forget the name of the show they did, but. Uh, it's the one where Murdoch won the world title from Elvis. 
Yes. And uh, he just talked about the energy being insane there. Just It's such a great wrestling city, St. Louis. Yes. Not a, on top of just that venue itself. St. Louis is such a good wrestling town. I have a quick question for you, Camaro. <laughs> this is Kyle. How you doing? How you doing, man? Uh, pretty good, thank you. Um, so, what's the deal with the Empire? Are you still a part of that, or are you not? <laughs> No, we actually just uh, broke up during uh, um, during the what was it, the Go Rush Rumble? Oh, no, the Rumble uh, in WOW. Uh, yeah, we just split. Because Derek Stone was kind yeah. of a you know what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I watched uh to catch I have up no on idea here. what you have to tell me. <laughs> we were well, talking about between you. your legs. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I, I, I didn't know much about you. So I watched five of your matches today. And so I was like, well, the second one was the empire. Uh, well, you and Derek stone ringside against what's his name? Jack gamble or Jack something. Gamble. Like. Yeah. And he cheated, but he was like a total dick in the <laughs> ring. And I'm like, we don't, <laughs> we don't like those kind of people. But I, I just look, saw the look on your face, and I'm like, I hope Camaro just punches him in the face. That ended up happening. Yep. <laughs> yeah, good. It happened the very next show. Uh, smack. But so, my, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Uh, the favorite one I saw was uh, you and Matt Fitchett at zero one one that I watched today. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. That, that was a nice, long match and ran very smoothly, and it just, it just it drew me to it once I started getting into the match. So. He's one of my favorite opponents. Yeah, he he's was, one of my favorite. I, I had a match with him. Another match we checked out. I had a match with him at CSW. That's really good. That I'm really proud of. So you ever uh, have time for that one? It's really good. I know. I never bragged about my matches like this, but goddamn, dude, Matt Fitch is one of my favorite opponents. I just wrote it down so I could watch <laughs> it. Yeah, Kyle. He came prepared. He brought notes, which is something that we <laughs> we don't usually do here. I but, have a short memory. That's true. But the, but no, uh, Fitchett, he's a hell of a hand. I, he had a damn good match with uh, O'Reilly Saturday for the, his title. And it, uh, it was, I, both those guys are just damn impressive. But uh, you can say that about most of the roster is 0-1, to be honest with you. So I figure he brought up the Empire. I'm going to bring up the Premier because you guys are damn entertaining <laughs> on 0-1. <laughs> So how did that all come about? Did you are you guys all from the St. Louis area? I know I think you and Bishop teamed up not too long ago on AEW. I think so. I assume you guys are both from down there. So Bishop and Campbell, they're from uh, Kansas City. Okay. So how we started, um, it originated with uh, Matt Kenway and Thomas Shire, and boy, Kenway texted me one day. He's like, "Hey man, I'm starting the faction. You know, you want to be a part of it." You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, man, cool. Yeah, I ain't not doing shit. I'm trying to figure, still trying to figure me out. Cool. Um, we started doing stuff in Indiana and uh, Paradigm. And that's where it really kind of took off. Then we added Campbell to the mix of things. Then COVID had happened. Then pretty much we started doing stuff at Zero One. And then a few months later, Kenway uh, up and quit the biz. And I guess I was promoted to leader. <laughs> Then, uh, I mean, yeah, dude, the rest is history. We've been doing stuff pretty much all over Missouri, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Texas. Like, those are my guys, man. I have the blast of those dudes, man. Yeah, now you've added uh, the Mad Dog to uh, to the fold there. I guess uh, they're kind of your uh, enforcer now. Yeah, yeah, he's a crazy son. <laughs> what, what's the quad father? Is that part of because of so many states or what? Huh? The quad father. That's my name, baby. <laughs> I didn't know what the four was for. If, well, quad, you know, but uh, oh, five. Yeah. If you get a good look at this guy, it's a it's a fitting name. This guy is huge. <laughs> So, yeah, I've, and I'm a fan of wordplay anyway. So the quad father is a great. Uh, no, I yeah, I giggled when I <laughs> saw it. I thought I liked it. But, uh, yeah, so, like I said, you had uh, you had a tough loss to, to Lander on Saturday. But you had a, pretty much a death grip on that uh, 0-1 heavyweight title for almost, it was almost a year, wasn't it? 
Oh, dude, it's 512 days. Holy crap. <laughs> yep. That's just a little more. It's a little more than a year. I'm like I said, I'm kind of late to the zero one party. I get uh, got into it pretty much uh, about the middle of last year. So, mm-hmm. so I'm still kind of playing catch up a little bit. But but yeah, you were right up there with the uh, you were working everybody, but uh is there anybody on your list that you want to want to take on going forward? I mean, I know you were supposed to get Alex Kane last month, and that's still one that, for my money, that I'd I'd want to see. Um, it's crazy, man. Like the list I did have, I kind of ran through it already. So like now, I'm just kind of like, well, okay, I'll just take any and anyone. Like, so recently I just actually wrestled uh, Mad Dog for Anarchy, and that was a really fun. That dude is so damn good at what he does. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's one of those things, man. Like, I feel like I've ran through the list of guys I really want to work recently. So now, like, I feel like I'm at the, like, stage where, like, okay, who's someone different? that I haven't wrestled or, or I haven't thought about wrestling that I want to wrestle to now. So, like, I didn't imagine I would be wrestling Mad Dog anytime soon, maybe for zero one, one but, like, not anytime soon. So, okay, cool. I get to wrestle the Mad Dog. So, like, you know, I would like to wrestle um, from the zero one roster, one-on-one. I would like to wrestle probably Anakin Murphy. I think he can have a good uh, singles match. Oh, that'd be fun. Um... Let's see. Let me think. Let me think. I, dude, I can wrestle Tanner Keelan every day of the week if I could. <laughs> if I could. Right. Oh, uh, let me sing that guy's praises because he's so damn good. He's so good. He does not get the praise he deserves. He is excellent. Oh, that dude. People talk about me and all that, and that's freaking great, but I'm going to talk about him. He is such a great human being, and he's such a phenomenal wrestler. Um, I just hope one day the world sees it as I do. Yeah. He's a guy we'd like to get on the show sometime. Uh, I got to just put the word out. Uh, but, yeah, he's – number one, he's fun to watch. Plus, he's a nice guy. So Yeah, he's awesome, dude. I love him. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, a question in the in the comment thread for you here, Camaro. Uh, Floyd Fisher, who is, uh, I guess he's a regular at Zero One shows. I think he's trying to stir shit up with you. He <laughs> says, after you, who was the best member of the premiere? Kenway, Shire, Soup, or Bishop? Shire. That's easy. Shire. He didn't even think about hesitating. No. Shire. <laughs> Shire. You've, been, you've been asked that question before, haven't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shire is so damn good, man. Shire, first of all, he was trained by Dory Funk. Oh. He's wrestled in Japan. Like, Shire is the freaking man. That's another person who does not get the praise he deserves. He should be everywhere. He should be a freaking millionaire. Shire is great. Like, I owe a lot to Shire. He's helped me. He's helped me figure out me a lot. I'm like, oh my goodness, I love Shire so much. He's a phenomenal person and even an, an even better wrestler. So Shire easily. Okay. Yeah, Floyd added uh just piggybacking on your comments. Tanner Keeler is the best unknown talent around. And everything I've heard just agrees with that. Yes. Yeah. Period. Period. Very underrated. He shouldn't be underrated, but he's very underrated. I find that to be the case with a lot of uh, guys that haven't got that big spotlight yet. There's so many just insanely good talent out there that just haven't gotten the chance yet. That just number one, like their hometown fans are waiting for them to get the shot, and then like there's fans like me that just love seeing new faces that just impress the hell out of me. You know what I mean? And uh, Tanner was oh. Tanner was new for me. Uh, when he showed up last month, that was the first time I'd seen him. And uh, he didn't wrestle, but he was he got involved uh, in the ring. But uh, that made me go back to YouTube and watch some of his matches. And, uh, but yeah, you're you're not lying. He's damn good. I do. I love him. So uh, I think Narge is listening on the, uh, on the feed. I haven't seen him on the thread, but I think he's got it in. And he's going to kill me if I don't bring up AEW. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you uh, you showed up. You were uh, part of uh, Mark Sterling's security force with Wardlow last. I think it was the week before last. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, just to be honest. How big is that motherfucker in real life? <laughs> he oh, he's huge. He's huge. He seemed, yeah. He just seemed Jack. He was like built out of granite or something. But you got to do the twenty on one match. So what was what was that like for you? Like being having that many people in in the ring at one time. Is it like is it tricky to get your footing in there to know where you're going and everything? Ah oh, man, I mean it wasn't it wasn't tricky for me because. I don't know. I know what the hell I'm doing, but everyone else, it seemed like they didn't listen to a freaking word they said backstage. I want to pull the curtain back a little bit. It could have been. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. But, um, <laughs> but um, man, it was just some guys, they just, they'll do. So they told they tell them like, hey, when you come in, don't look at the guy. You know, don't look like a deer headlights. You know, look like you're about to either try to fight or like you're about to get your ass kicked. Mm-hmm. Some guys are just looking deer headlights and like this is the easiest assignment we could have ever had but like but you know yeah. it, it was fun warlow is a strong dude because i didn't even even have to jump for him yeah <laughs> that dude picked me up like i was 100 pounds i said oh cool man this is what it feels when people wrestle me nice <laughs> <laughs> so did you have a lot of interaction with with Wardlow backstage beforehand. Just- oh yeah, he's a sweet guy. He's awesome. He's awesome. Cool. He was so like really nice, really um sorry, I'm pulling back the curtain. He's a real nice guy. <laughs> oh, he, he's, <laughs> he's a real he's a baby face now, so he can be a nice guy. He was real awesome to us, man. Um just real um, you know, just like, hey, do you guys need anything? This is okay. And he's a real cool dude, man. Real professional. Cool. All of the all that whole lock that whole atmosphere is an ideal atmosphere for um like a pro wrestler and like especially like guys like us who are trying to get to that next level because usually it's always the tense the 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 the, i don't want to step on anybody's toes everyone's real nice you know you're encouraged to ask questions you're encouraged to talk to people um see a couple weeks ago i had met um Dax, uh, Dax and Cash at, uh, in West Virginia, and you know, just kind of connecting, connecting with Dax when I saw him there at AW. Like, hey man, remember me? Yeah, yeah. He's oh yeah, you know, like, and you know, wrestled Billy Gunn before a couple uh, last year for Zero One. Right. And every time I see him, I he's he, he I, I love the fact that he remembers me. That really is super cool to me. Yeah, that's because his last time. He walked up to me and shook my hand, you know, before I even got a chance to see him first. He walked oh, and wow. shook my hand. I was like, wow, that's super tight. You know, and like freaking we, we, uh, you, Rila Yuda, like he spoke to me before I even got to see him. Like, I'm like, oh, dude, you guys remember me? This is real sick. Like, it, everyone's super nice there, dude. Super, super, super nice. Like freaking Dustin Rhodes. Um, I'm sitting in catering uh, with the boys. We're just hanging out. And he walks up to me. She starts. He just starts wrestling with me. <laughs> like these dudes are just—they're having a grand time being there, dude. And that's what I feel like wrestling's supposed to be about. Supposed yeah. to have fun. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just curious, did you have any interaction with Tony Khan at all? The first time I was there, I did. Um, when I did extra work, um, he just said thanks for the, you know the match and shook my hand. That was it. Okay. Well, he's a busy guy. I imagine he had a lot on his plate. Oh, he was running around like a madman. Every time I saw him, running around with his coffee in the hand like a madman. <laughs> so is the, uh, I'm going to assume the door opens for you to come back and uh, and do more work for them? Oh, well, absolutely. Hopefully, the next time is permanent. <laughs> yeah? Because I, I know I saw you and uh, Bishop had the uh, match with Private Party on Dark the same way. Yes. Week. Yes. That's a fun team to watch. They're so athletic. It's awesome. They're so fun. So fun. So you talked about wanting to get permanent with AEW. What other goals do you have? Like, do you, is, I would assume like Japan's like in, on your list of things to do. And like, what else is on your radar for your career going forward? So like, I've always liked, um, to kind of aspire my, like kind of, I want to mirror, my my merit i want my career to mirror 
the Jericho's, the Eddie Guerrero's, the Chris Benoit's, you know, traveling to Mexico, wrestling in Mexico, wrestling in Japan, you know, wrestling for a big company, then finally making it to the company, yeah, you know, which is WWE, of course. Um, so yeah, man, like I've always aspired to be that type of wrestler. So I'm um, that's that's my goal. Um, my I mean my everyone wants to make money, but like my goal is to just travel, see the world before I settle down in my career. And not settle down like get complacent or anything, but settle down my like aiming for the big the big guns. Right, right. That's where that's where and to me, when you're an athlete, everyone wants to go to the Super Bowl. Everyone wants to go to the NBA finals and you know, they want to go to the big time. Every, every wrestler wants to go to WrestleMania, wrestle WrestleMania. And it may sound pretty uh, arrogant, but I'm an overly confident dude, and I'm going to do that one day. So um, I those are my goals and aspirations. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with confidence, that's for sure. But I think you're going to get there just from what I've seen of you. And that's uh, going back to what you were saying about Jericho and Eddie. That's the thing that I always respected about Jericho, especially just from reading his book. He went to Germany, then he and he would go to Mexico and Japan, and he he would learn all these different styles, and just mm-hmm. incorporate it all into what he does. And that's what made him one of the best of the best. I think. Oh my God, dude! I love his books. Oh, when I first God. started, um, so when I first started training, I didn't have a car, and when I tra- so I lived in Kansas City when I first started um, wrestling, but my training school was in Kansas for like a like the first month or two. And I had to, I was still in college and I had the bus ride was two hours. So I had uh, my friend, let me borrow, borrow Undisputed and Best in the World. Um, I read those books every day I went to training. And like, it felt, it felt like I learned a ton about the business before I even started wrestling, reading those two books, man. And like my respect level for Jericho went up even higher. He became my top three after reading those books, man, top five, my reading those books, like, dude, like, this is incredible. And like, I, it made me want it even more, yeah. you know? Yeah. But Jericho, his, like, I love Foley's books cause they're so entertaining, but Jericho's, it seemed like he was kind of letting you in like to his, his journey, which I always liked about, especially the first book, the you know, lion's tale. But, uh, I could go on about Jericho for hours. He like I said, him and, Eddie Guerrero and just that style was always what I was always drawn to. Uh, and those dudes, like man, people can call them small and say they're tiny, but th- those dudes were mean. Like they will, they will fuck somebody up. Hey, Jericho took Goldberg down in the locker room, so I will, I won't talk shit about Jericho. I'm, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do, do you drink? Huh. <laughs> You ask everybody that. Do you drink? I haven't picked up a bottle in two years. Oh, wow. Wow. Impressive. I just picked one up a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marco's, Marco's trying to get us a Terramana sponsorship from The Rock. Uh, just Oh, dude. <laughs> what's, what's, so, what's so sad about that, dude? I wanted to try, try that so bad, but it wasn't here in St. Louis yet. Uh-huh. As soon as I quit. This shit is on the shelves everywhere. I said, son of a bitch. Well, not that I would uh, encourage you to fall off the wagon. I think that's what it's called, <laughs> or get back on, or how, whatever phrase it is. Off. I can't keep track. But, you know, I mean, some people quit for personal choices, not because they have a problem. They just decide they don't want to drink right now. So if one day you choose you want to drink again, you're more than welcome to holler us because we will always have Terra Mana. Shoot. Absolutely. Never <laughs> we'll, say we'll never. Bring it, we'll bring it to Mattoon sometime. Never say never. <laughs> It's plentiful in the land of Champagne. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, zero. I'll go back to zero one. They announced the show for uh, August twentieth, uh, and they announced Jonathan Gresham and Mike Bennett uh, for that show. Are you uh, angling to get in the ring with one of those guys by any chance for that show? I'm actually wrestling Mike Bennett in a couple of weeks for Glory Pro. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm he, looking forward to that. Man, he's such a good talent. I'm looking for. I've always liked uh, following him. He's a real cool dude. Like I really got inspired by his um, his uprising from like his um. He know he had like an alcohol drinking problem. Yeah. And just to see his transition of like how he looked physically and mentally, 
I'm like, oh, this dude is really like busting his ass to be a better person, not just a better wrestler, but a better person. Yeah, he's so like, guy. yeah, man. Yeah, he's uh, one of my favorite followers on social media just because everything's positive with him, and uh, he's a guy. Not only would I want to have him on to chat with us sometime, I I wonder if he would ever go into like pub, like uh, motivational speaking. Like as oh, a dude, guy. absolutely. Because he's got absolutely. a hell of a story. Yes, absolutely, man. So, uh, so what else do you have uh, going on coming up with Camaro? Just get your plugs in. Let's see. Um, this month, I have Glory Pro at the end of the month, Anarchy. Um, I'm traveling. I'm going down to see Rick Flair's last match um, at the end of the month of nice. July as well with David Richards. Um, what else I got going on this month? Debuting in Iron Spirit now in a couple of weeks. Uh, ba, 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 ba. what else do I got? See, I have a so with Dynamo Pro, we are actually we collab, we collab, we collab with the um roller derby. Uh, we have a show coming up with that. Uh, is that the ninth? Uh, so this is like roller derby. So, that, first of all. I was blown away by the fact that roller derby is a work, and I was so disappointed. Yeah, I know. It kills the mystique. I was like, what? <laughs> hey, uh, Camaro, uh, just so you know, Tanner Keeler is watching the feed here, and he says, quote, Camaro is my hero. Tanner, no, you're my hero, okay? You're my freak. You're my you want me to queue up the you're fucking Celine Dion right? now? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey Tanner, since I know you're listening, we'd love to have you on sometime. Uh, hit us up, and uh, we'll find a date, and we'll get you on here sometime. And I'll have the Celine Dion ready. Yes. Hey, uh, <laughs> one of our regular listeners, in fact, the most regular listener we have, Dwayne, says, "Was there anyone that you have had real life heat with?" Well, he said real loof first, but then he corrected. Oh, it. he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So you know. Gotta so were you ever aloof with somebody first? <laughs> And then, did you have any real heat with them? Um, not, not, I'm really cool with everybody, man, for the most part. Like, people people in my circle, they'll have heat with people. But, like, me, I'm never, I'm, I don't give a shit about none of that, man. Because, first of all, I'm the type of person, if I got a problem with you, I'm going to say something, then I'm going to squash it. Because at the end of the day, we got to work with each other so in some capacity. Right on, right and on. But well, wasn't all, there some like, kid in the fourth grade you just wanted to knock the fuck out of one time? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So, and yeah, I'll Dwayne, the answer is yes. He has had real-life heat with somebody. Probably not somebody you've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> what about Fred Yeehaw? He always looked mad. Oh, I love Fred. Oh, well, my God. If that was my last That's name, I'd be guy. pissed off. That's another guy I love to wrestle We've wrestled so many times in the last year. He's so good, and I love wrestling him. He's another guy I can wrestle five days a week, seven days a week. That was good. It was a good you match. okay there, I'm Mark? Watching. I'm good. I'm good. That Terramana uh, hit the wrong windpipe. I, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> Floyd, <laughs> Floyd uh, you got another kid. He's all over the place on this. Camaro Jackson knocked my hat off. Make a heat there, he says. He probably had it. He probably had it coming, though, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, probably more than likely. <laughs> all right, Narge is a, Narge is wanting to join us. Oh, all right. Um, can you have the link available just to send him real quick? Because yeah. I don't have it stored somewhere. Yeah, our uh, regular co-host uh, is not in studio, but he's getting ready to call in. I'm like the sub teacher soon. today. More copy. I'm- we're, we're getting, getting our other host a Zoom link. Normally, he's sitting next to us. Yeah. How well, does while we're he... waiting, Camaro, what do you think about Big Beef? I watched that match. Cool dude. Broke my nose. Cool dude, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you can only say that if you're in the wrestling business. Oh, he broke my nose, but he's a cool dude. <laughs> broke my nose usually is not the beginning of the <laughs> best friend story. <laughs> <laughs> it's the meat. Nah, team. man, it was just it was right. just physical. It was just physical, man. That's how wrestling goes. It's physical as mean. Um, I prefer physical and mean. That map, oh, I love it. Like, I think I have a problem, but I, I like that shit, man. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a receipt. 
Nah, I want to receive just boys wrestling. It was men wrestling. Let me, let me rephrase that. Yeah. For no boys or men. Right. It was men wrestling. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> so I'm willing to bet once Narge gets in here, if if he manages to get in while we got He should be here shortly, yeah. I, I'm going to bet dollars to donuts. His first question is going to be about AEW. Because I don't know that he's been listening the whole time. Okay. Because he's a big if, AEW guy. If you're right, I will take two giant swigs of Terramana. <laughs> well, you're, it's but a, if you're wrong... Where's, You're not driving, so you will do the same. See, there's no loser there. It's yeah, it's somebody a getting a little drinky, drinky. Yeah, I, it's not like I have to get up at five in the morning for work tomorrow. Here's the problem, though. This is really bad. You know, we're discussing this on air, and he is listening. <laughs> so he's really going to choose which one yeah, of us right? is doing the double shot. That's how this is going to work. <laughs> hey, we're we're our, not smart. I heard you guys. Uh, so uh, my first question will not be about AEW. <laughs> It'll be about how do you tie your shoes. <laughs> oh yeah. You said how do I tie my shoes? My wrestling sh- boot shoes? Or my no, I'm saying shoes? that Narge, Narge would do that just on purpose so Mark over here would have to take the double shot of tequila instead of me because he knows I can do it. <laughs> oh, God. Jokes on him. I wear slip-ons. <laughs> All right. So while we're waiting on uh, on Narge, there's a uh... Camaro. If you had a chance to wrestle against anybody in WWE or AEW, you know, one of the bigger productions on TV, like be part of a big promotion, who would it be and why is that person the one you would choose? Do they have to be alive or dead or can it be dead? I'll tell you what. Uh, when I used to do a, uh, a music-based uh, site with a magazine and stuff, I used to ask a question, alive or dead, who would you like to have dinner with type of thing. So uh, we'll go with that. Alive or dead, I don't care who. Who would you like to wrestle and why? Eddie Guerrero, because the emotion that he used to bring out of me as a kid and the, and just the fans, the audience was incredible. And I just feel like wrestling is emotion. Um, That's what wrestling is built off of. People kind of lose that within the moves and stuff, but wrestling is emotion, man. Um, And and Matt, Matt Toon, those people hated me. They wanted to see me lose, and I wouldn't lose for 512 days. That was that's emotion. And when I finally lost, that was real. Like they, those fans beating on the ring, cheering for Lander, like they wanted that. Like that's that's genuine emotion. And like that's what Eddie Guerrero had, man. Like every time he cheated, you were like, uh oh. And he got away with it. It's like, oh, then he'll win. It's like, oh. Then like when he beat Lesnar. That's, that was peak emotion, dude, because oh, yeah. that was real. Like, his real-life struggles, like him, you know, going through the, when he had the, the drugs, um, being fired, um, almost losing his family. And, like, for him to reach that that pinnacle, the top of the mountain in his career, that was – everything he went through was almost worth it because of the, the, the real-life emotion, you know, that wrestling brings out of you. And, like, man, Eddie was that guy. And, like, what's crazy, when he passed away, dude, I couldn't go to school. I didn't go to school the next day. I legit cried in my room when I went to WWE.com. I'll never forget it. It was Sunday. I went to WWE.com. It's like, 6 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got home, went home from my grandparents' house, my grandmother's house. And I'm like, what? Rest in peace. I'm like, is this a angle something? I'm thinking it was a retirement, but... I did the math. That was mm-hmm. the year he was born in. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And I was just so confused. I'm like, is this real? Then, like, before I could even, like, really process that it was real, I just started bawling, dude. I'm like, what the f-? I just bawled, bawled, bawled for a good three days, dude. Wow. And, like, the next morning, just seeing him, seeing it on the news, I'm like, wow. I was sick to my stomach when he passed away, man. Yeah. It's, uh, I remember that. I was. I didn't find out till literally like right before Raw because I was working. So I got home and then it showed up. And yeah, I was, I was more stunned than anything just because he'd gotten sober about, I don't know, four years, three or four years to that point. Mm-hmm. So then you just, you think, oh, wow, I, because the first thought, he's like, oh, shit, did he fall off the wagon? But then you find out, no, he just had a heart problem that I guess was a residual of all that 
trouble that he'd had. But yeah, it just you could have knocked me down with a feather when I heard about that because he's one of my favorite guys also. And uh, it's kind of the same deal with Benoit when uh, the news about him broke because that's the same deal. They didn't announce that till pretty much like right before Raw started. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not knowing the circumstances, I I was just shocked. You know, it's, it takes a lot to shock shock me. But with Benoit, are we at the point yet where he gets recognized finally again by Vince? Uh, Has that happened? I don't think it'll happen. I mean, uh, you know, now, now that we know what CTE is, and we actually know what it is, I mean, Benoit suffered from a medical issue. This yeah. wasn't, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. It's, Have we not gotten to the point where we can say, hey? I, I don't I don't think they've got to that point yet. Uh, I, it's a, like I said, it's a PR nightmare yeah. in general just we could barely yeah. have a whole podcast just on that oh yeah yeah argument. i mean junior say out from the clc hawks yeah you know i mean it's enough of a well-publicized issue now that people that you know take hits upside the head get concussions all that it does some serious damage mm-hmm. and it can actually affect their mental well-being entirely i i don't know if maybe you know at some point you need to cast aside the negativity and realize this was caused by wrestling to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's let's. Uh, All right. So Dwayne, our again, our yeah. ever-present biggest yeah. fan, let's, let's shift gears has asked bit. since you answered Eddie Guerrero, and apparently that didn't satisfy him. Uh, <laughs> he would like to know who you would choose that is alive. Uh. Hmm. Whatever you can you, the wrong answer, you can Dwayne say Mark Redman and he'll he'll start becoming a wrestler right now. <laughs> yeah, I want to become a good wrestler. Yeah, we didn't say good. Oh, okay. You know what? There are three people. Three, Dwayne. Oh. You're getting three answers for the price of one. So, uh, Randy Orton, okay, um, Dolph Ziggler, and The Miz. Nice. That's a good threesome. That's a that's a damn good threesome. Uh, everybody says uh, that's funny. When I ever said I had a good threesome, <laughs> that was not what it meant. I knew you were going to take it somewhere else. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah, everybody that always talks about oh they're not doing anything with Ziggler, everybody forgets just how freaking good he is in the ring. And oh, uh, so good. Yeah. But yeah, he's uh, he's one of my favorites. The Miz, you know, can't go wrong with the Miz just for charisma and. Also, the fact he just totally busted his ass for what twelve years to, because he got that stigma that he was just a reality show guy. That didn't he like uh, win a dancing competition too? He didn't win. He was on uh, Dancing with. He was the super Mildly close, right? Recognizable, yeah, or whatever it's called. Dancing with the Stars, but you know what? I guess you know. I mean, you guys know who the fuck he is, so he's obviously yeah. a star in that's, that world. That's true. But yeah, and then Orton just. I don't know if there's Orton's cool. I, there, like I don't Orton. know if there's anybody better all around than Orton these days, uh, especially in WWE. Goddamn, dude, Orton! Oh, it's like he just walks in the arena and they just lose their mind. Mind. He has that presence, man. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Camaro. I he when I was in Peoria in 2002 for his first TV match on SmackDown, and he had it then. He was 23, 24, but he had that already. Just I, I don't know if that's a third generation thing or just a natural ability thing. But I mean, just from day one, you could tell he was going to go somewhere. And he had hair. That's incredible. He had hair. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne says, "I was right there with you until you said Miz." Nah, I, I mean, <laughs> Miz ain't everybody's cup of tea, man. I understand. Dwayne, that's why you're a listener, Dwayne. My, my wife never liked The Miz until he started doing the reality show, The uh, Miz and Mrs. Now she watches it every week. And well, that's she's a good all about show, it. though. I enjoy it, but it's funny. All right, so. all right, Mark Redman, if you were a wrestler, who would you like to be matched up against? And we'll pretend you have the skill set Let's to do so. Let's assume I have ability to right. do that. We'll pretend you have the skill set. Uh, are we doing dead or alive or just in Well, you'd probably beat the dead person. Probably. <laughs> I mean, that remains to be seen. I could trip on a banana peel or something. You know. Or an arch could throw them at me and just there you hit go. me down. Uh, I would say I got to go Owen Hart, to be honest with you. Nice. Oh, nice. man, absolutely. Kyle? Uh, Alexa Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now he thinks like I do. 
And I'm still you thinking. So in trouble. And I'm still thinking threesome. So who's another one of them? I'm, I'm hoping my wife is not listening. <laughs> she's right now. You know what she's doing? She's going. I can get that flavor blonde in my hair too. <laughs> I've tried and tried and tried to get her to turn blonde, and she will not do it. <laughs> well, you know. I'll be honest, man. Some women can pull off changing their hair color, and some are like. And they figured it out. At some point, they did try it, and they went, yeah, no, that doesn't fucking work for me. My skin's wrong, or my this, or my whatever. They just say no. You just got to accept it, man. Yeah. So, Marco, I would assume you would say The Rock? Yeah, I would, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would dance with The Rock. I would also dance with Hulk Hogan and make him do the Thunderlips moves. Because, I mean, <laughs> after all, I mean, after all, Rocky Balboa is my hero, so Thunderlips kicking my ass would be kind of feeling real. I thought Rick Springfield was your hero. We're talking acting here. Oh, Rick Springfield's he's an actor. level of acting has not arisen to the uh, occasion for me. You don't put Dr. Noah Drake up there with Rocky Balboa. That's a soap Rick opera, Drake. dude. <laughs> I'm surprised Nothing you about soap operas. You know, oh, wait a minute. Wait, that's what wrestling is. Now I found the, now I find it. No, I'm kidding with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't take it the direction I did. What's that? With a woman. Well, no, you already answered. And I was like, I'm bored with that idea. Well, I think you So I'm going to get the best of both worlds. No. I, I think you'd have a fun match with Effie, too. Effie's a fucking blast. Marco's a big Effie fan. Effie's awesome. Do you know him, Camaro? Yeah, I love Effie. That guy is a beast. He's one of those people that, and we say this every show, if anybody has a way to get to him so we can have an interview, we want to talk to Effie. We really do like Effie here. Yeah, we're uh, coming up on our year episode, and we're uh, working out. We're trying to find a a big guest for it. So, A super-duper special, <laughs> super-duper guest. That's right. Uh, Kamara, have here. you ever uh, done any GCW work? Just curious. Uh, I did their 24-hour show. Okay. Um, That's a long show. I think I did one more show with them. Um, the Mania Weekend in Dallas for Glory Pro. Okay. And yeah, that was it. The 24-hour show, oh, that was a disaster. I, because I we wrestled that. did. We wrestled. You said, where was it? It was in, a, I think it was in a bar in Jersey, wasn't it? It was in Pennsylvania. Oh, it was Pennsylvania? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But yeah, safety up Pennsylvania. Anyway, it was. You mean the home of Rocky Balboa? Damn, there it is. It was, hey, that shit was tight. So before I get to the wrestling part of it, we were, where were, where, 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 where we go? I think we went to Little Italy and we had like the best Philly cheesesteak ever. Oh my goodness, dude. Ever. It was so good. Anyway. <laughs> that shit was a disaster. First of all, we were supposed to wrestle, and the stream goes out. But before that stream goes out, I pour water on myself. It's in the middle of January. It's cold. Mm-hmm. The stream goes out. We don't wrestle until about 20 minutes later. I'm freezing. Oh, man. I'm freezing. At that point, I'm like, fuck it. I just want to go back home. <laughs> Uh, I, do you remember who you worked on that show? I'm I'm just curious. Uh, oh, Jordan Blades and uh, Eel O'Neill. Okay. So, yeah, we're uh, we're big GCW fans on this show. Me and Arch go to whenever we can when they're in Chicago. Uh, we honestly we'd like to go check it out in St. Louis sometime if they're ever back down there because I know they go every now and then. I think they got one coming up down there. Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, Friday. Yeah. But uh, do you stay in contact with, like, how hard is it to stay in contact with promoters around the country to to kind of keep your name out there? Um, Now, now, like, now, it's not as, it's not as hard now because it's like, it's crazy. I reached out to, um, I reached out, when I reached out to Iron Spirit, um, you know, like, I was like, hey, you know, I want to start working. If you guys have possibility, oh, we know who you are. And like, it's crazy people are starting to say that more. Like, we all we already know who you are. We've been trying, we've been wanting to work with you for a long time. Like, oh shit, this is pretty cool. Um, it's, it's not, it's, it's not hard because sometimes I'll get their numbers and kind of keep in contact with them. I'm not a fan of like doing stuff on social media, like DMs or nothing like that. I like to be professional, like emails, um, phone calls, texts, whatever. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not even, it's crazy, man. It's not as hard as it used to be for me. Um, like st- I, I still have to reach out to people, of course, but it's not as hard to like get a response. 
sometimes it's either, oh, yeah, we would love to work with you, or it's something like, hey, like, we want to do work with you, but just we're booked up at this time, but we'll reach back out to you. And right. usually they reach back out to me. Like, that's really the cool part about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest. I try to email, like, when I'm booking guests for this show, I try to email people when I can, but nine times out of ten, I've got to go to social just because – I don't I'm I don't have all the contacts or anything. So I mean social media is easier too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right. Well We're just waiting on Narch. He literally yeah. just messaged said, I'm booting up the laptop, but I do believe his laptop is there oh, it is. Hey there. There it is. Let's admit him. Hold on all a right. minute. Hang on a minute. What do we got no, here? Don't admit him. Try to try to co host is an hour and a half late for his own show. <laughs> Like you had a kid playing t-ball or something. Trying to be a good dad or something. <laughs> hey, there he is. It connected. Narge, can you hear us? And he's muted. We're waiting for him to unmute, and then he will say, "How? How? There he is. What's up, buddy? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We good. can hear you. How you doing, bro? I'm good. How are you? All right. How did Merman do tonight? He did great. Awesome. Did awesome. He got a did medal. He... Uh, strutted off the field like he'd won a championship this weekend too. So <laughs> did he? Did that he grab the uh, Park District fire alarm on the way out? No, that did not happen. <laughs> well, damn it. He's let us down again. Anyways, uh, Camaro, uh, Narge has joined us here. He is the usual other half of the tandem team here, but he was doing the uh, daddy-do thing, and he couldn't be in early, so now he's with us. What's up, Narge? Camaro, nice to talk to you, sir. I've heard a lot about you. I've seen some stuff on the Internet. Um, what I want to ask you first is about AEW, though. Damn it, <laughs> motherfucker! Putting <laughs> down right. those double you, shots there, Mark. Yeah, hang on, here we go. Proof. Let me move the microphone. <laughs> here we go. This is a bottle. Uh huh. Go, 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 go. I'll be honest. I missed some of the questioning here. I, I'd heard. Um, did I hear you say Eddie Guerrero was your dream opponent? Is that correct? Yes. Can't go wrong there. Eddie makes it, made everybody look good. It didn't matter who it was, whether it was Brock Lesnar, Rey Mysterio. Oh, uh, a million bucks, man. Yeah, I think that would be an excellent matchup for sure. I got to get down and see Zero One sometime. Like I said, I haven't seen a show live. I know Dave and some of the other guys. I used to wrestle a couple years back, and um, I miss doing the indie thing, seeing <sighs> the local stuff. So I got to get down there with Mark sometime and check it out for sure. I mean, that's a fun time down there, dude. Real fun. I used to wrestle with uh, DeCobra, so I know him. I know he's been around a few times. I'm sure you probably worked with him. Uh, yeah, right. I worked with him. Yeah. DeCobra? Yeah. So. Is that the one Justin King? That's right, yeah. That's the one Justin, Justin King manages. Man, he was, oh, okay, yeah. he was there on Saturday. Oh, by the way, uh, I think it was today, I mean, but... Happy birthday to the King Brothers. Yes. 38. Yes. Uh, I think it was today. It might have been yesterday, but... I believe today. it was today. Okay. So I know uh, they know about us. We've been trying Justin, to get... Justin listens, right? I've been trying to get one of them on here for an interview, but I think schedules are not allowing for the Tuesdays. Right. So we have had a conversation amongst ourselves about doing a a special off-day evening type thing where yeah. we can get them in, because those guys have been working in the pro wrestling circuit uh, individually and together at different times. I think Justin's still very heavily involved where Robert's not as involved. I but think he's doing Robert's they... doing security for AEW. Oh, so he's in the oh, AEW wow. side now. Did yeah. he leave as a police post? Yes, he's Oh, I didn't know that. Doing security at AEW. Wow, so, that's so... awesome. So I mean these guys, they're fantastic guys. I've known them for God, fifteen about fifteen years now I've known these guys, which is good. I met them at a, a little bar in Tolono, Illinois. They're and, great uh, guys. Great guys. They're good guys. Radmakers? Yep, at Rad's Rockin' Radmakers. But uh yeah, we want to get them on because I guarantee you they have some insight and they have some stories. I don't remember which one of the brothers it was, but he went over and he went to a promotion in the Middle East. Justin. Oh, wow. Was it Justin? Yeah. Uh, Kyle. Kyle's their biographer. I should just ask him, <laughs> Kyle, uh, what size shoes did they wear? I think a 12 and a half. Okay. Wide. Yeah, he worked uh, for Great Great Khali's promotion over there for a little bit. That was it. Right. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So, yeah, I could have added that on too, but Narge beat me to it. Well, you don't want to seem too knowledgeable. Right. I want to seem stupid. I'm in Narja's spot. <laughs> hey, Kamara, do you know our friend Menders? Mindy Elam? Menders? Uh, yeah. Blue hair, sat in the front row, usually cheers for you. 
Oh, it's your she's videos. a zero one super fan. <laughs> I have to see the face. Okay. Well, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I know. Yeah. Cool. The blue hair. She, it's the blue yeah. hair that I remember. Yeah. Blue hair and glasses. Yeah. So and she's yes. Uh, she's yes, big into the zero one. In fact, when she comes on as a guest host, the entire show is <laughs> generally monopolized by her knowledge of zero one. Yes, I know exactly. You said the glasses. I remember now. <laughs> it's because the other 14 people with blue hair that go don't have glasses. Right. That's the whole reason. <laughs> like a game of guess who. <laughs> right. So, Narge, you uh, you missed a pretty fun conversation, but I'm going to throw something to you real quick. Now, you heard all of our choices for living or dead, who we want to be. We want to hear yours. So who who would you pick? Rick what fucking was the, Flair. What? What was the question? Who, uh, who would I want to ra- wrestle? Yeah. Living or dead, dead or alive, pro wrestling, if you were given an opportunity in the ring and we pretend you're up to the snuff of the person, who? I'm going to go out on a limb and say you would choose Ric Flair, but I could be wrong. He's probably going to do something lame and say Hogan. No, neither one. I think my style would have my style would have matched up better with Vader. So, and there, you know, I like nice. to lay him in back when I did it. I was I worked pretty snug, and I know Vader did as well. So I always appreciated that. But I think Vader would be the guy that... You know, I would want to mix it up with. Plus, didn't you do a Canadian Destroyer once? I did not do a Canadian Destroyer. (laughs) I attempted to do one and about killed a man. That was my ex. She did the entire battleship. (laughs) Narge, Narge, don't tell my wife what my answer was, okay? I didn't hear it. I won't repeat it. Can I repeat it? Yeah, you can repeat it. He said Alexa Bliss. That's not a bad answer. (laughs) I mean, it's a great answer. It's like dinner and a show. You got to play the Bowling for Soup song at the same time. But we also know that Narja's second choice would definitely be Randy the Macho Man Savage because he would beat the tar out of him. Well, he'd try. He'd beat him. Yeah, bro. (laughs) I mean, Narja is just like Hulk Hogan when it comes to Randy the Macho Man Savage. Oh, kill him, brother. He doesn't respect him? Exactly. (laughs) So Narge, uh, yeah, you kind of you missed out on some of this uh, this banter here. So you got anything you want to throw at Camaro while we got him on? I don't. I think you guys hit the, the stuff I heard were some of the questions I'd ask. Like I said, I, I don't. I'm not as well versed in the zero one and some of the indie stuff. I know Camaro's done some AEW. Um, did you guys happen to ask? I mean, Camaro, what, what are your plans for the next six months? I mean, what are you looking to do? Do you have anything lined up that uh, for sure you want to accomplish before the end of the year? Um, man, um, I would say just keep climbing the ladder, man. Just keep going higher. Just keep going higher. Um, my my biggest goal, of course, is to be seen somewhere and have a a good paying contract or something. Um, but I just want to keep climbing, man. I was gonna keep doing my thing, and hopefully, this hard work pays off, and it will. So that's really my thing. I just I just want to keep busting my ass and just showing people why I'm who I am and why I'm one of one if if not the best wrestlers in the world. And I'm I'm not limiting myself to the country, but the world. So you know. There you go. Well, really I'll tell you game. what. You know what? I, I would be really impressed if you were talking about the entire universe. Well, you oh. can be, you can be universal <laughs> champion. You know. Yeah, there you go, universal champion. Hey, uh, so. And this may have been asked. I was busy doing other things a couple times, but what I, I assume that wrestling is not your daily go-to breadwinner. What mm-hmm. uh, what do you do generally? What is your what is your trade in life? Do you have one that you like prefer? Or um, so currently I'm working at the gym, so I'm a membership intake slash building monitor slash everything. I do a little bit of everything. Nice. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy working with people, um, helping people. You know, talking about fitness. Do they recommend you? Wanna, you? Do you want to put a plug in for the place you work? Because you might have some fans that might show up. Oh, psh, dude, I actually have a couple that come work out, and that was just completely co- coincidental. They recognized me one day. I was like, "How'd you find me?" <laughs> um, it's called Centennial Comments. It's in University City. That's in St. Louis. Um, okay. So All right. Like, yeah. You know, we had some guys have some really. I don't want to say weird, but very unusual day jobs that we've talked to. I know Ninja Mac said he used to work for the circus. 
Uh, right. Gringo Loco is a florist. Uh, mm-hmm. Rhino, he told me he owns a marina in Detroit. So you what, was just, it, what was it Rain did? And she was very clear about the fact she, she's uh, not quitting the job even if she becomes a superstar one day. Uh, something about like gluten-free pancakes, if I remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she crusties. That was yeah. it. Yeah, she worked for a so, yeah, factory down in Effingham area that does that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's one of the things that fascinates me is seeing what you guys do like, to to keep the to keep the lights on while you're pursuing pursuing the dream. You know what I mean? I, I think it's yeah, more man. interesting than actors and actresses. When you ask them, they say, oh, "I work at Chili's." <laughs> uh, I, was, I was I was a I was a service manager at Applebee's for a couple of years, and then I got an acting gig. And you know, it's like, all right, so you're all waiters and waitresses. Great. <laughs> I bagged groceries, and then a director walked through and goes, "You'd be a good actor." <laughs> right, right. Well, did you notice my bagging technique? <laughs> All right. Well, Camaro, we're not going to keep you too much longer. We're going to let you get back to whatever it is you have that you got to get back to. But we really Going appreciate you coming on with us and chatting with us for a little while. Did we talk to him about any merch he might have available? Uh, we did not. Uh, Pro a- Wrestling Tees is where we do ours. But do you have like uh, an online merch store or any online presence or anything you want to tell us and tell our listeners yeah. about so they can find you? So I'm on, um, I got my merch through Mouthpiece Studios. I mean, you can easily just Google that. It's the first, prefer, it's usually the first thing, Mouthpiece Studios. Um, I have a new merch on there. It's uh, Star Wars themed because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And it's it's Mandalorian uh, and Mandalorian fun. It's have you played the new Lego album. game? I have not yet. I'm I'm waiting to get a PlayStation Five, but I'm I swear to God, I feel like I'm going to break before that happens. Have, so. have you Have you watched Boba Fett or? And there's a new one now, Obi Wan, right? I've watched it all. I've watched it all more than once. So <laughs> the Man- the Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Obi Wan, those are the three I know right off the top of my head that came out on right. D plus. Of the mm-hmm. three, which is the one you say is the one people should watch, like the best? Oh of God, them. damn! Obi Wan was so good, but like <laughs> nice. The finale of season two of the Mandalorian. Holy crap. No spoilers. Holy okay, yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. I literally watched season one of The Mando, and season oh. two got queued up, and I just didn't watch it. And I don't, you know, it's, it's there. It's not going to go oh, away, so dude. I'll get there. Hold on. You need to watch it. <laughs> okay. Holy you're you're right. told by a very strong I'm going to invite man. Narge over to watch, watch it, because Narge is totally not the Star Wars guy. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious. Uh, oh, sorry, Camaro. Uh, Star Wars, man, it's so emotional. It's so em- It's heavy in emotions. So, like, with Kenobi, man, he's dealing with that trauma of, you know, losing Anakin and Mm -hmm. the Jedi Order being destroyed. And, like, holy crap, the way that show ends is so heavy. I might need therapy. I might need (laughs) therapy. Uh, So, just, I'm just curious. What's your, I was going to ask, favorite Star Wars movie? I want to see if uh, you've got the Revenge of the Sith. Really? Yep. You know what? I Interesting. Do. That's my favorite of the prequels. I'm a I'm an Empire Strikes Back guy myself, but uh, if, yeah, wasn't if, that the one where Jabba the Hutt was in it, or was that throw, Jedi? He was an old Jedi. Movie. No, I mean the main Jabba, the one with Princess Leia in the bikini. Oh, that was which, Jedi. Yeah, that was Jedi. Jedi. Okay, I was gonna say. I just didn't remember which one he was the main. Should have just know. named that movie Star Wars Leia in the Gold Bikini because that's how people. <laughs> that, you yeah. That? Did you see the TikTok where? Uh, they said that all of them were named incorrectly because of what was going on. They all have the same names, but they are all on different movies because of what happened. Oh wow, I yeah. didn't see that. I'll, nope. have, I'll have to find that and send it to you. No. Nope. <laughs> all right. Well, Camaro, thanks again for joining with us, man. It was awesome talking to you. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you uh, at zero one going forward, or who knows? Maybe we'll make a road trip down to. St. Louis, check out Glory Pro. I just want to say one more yeah. thing to Camar- to you, Camaro. Is first of mm-hmm. all, it's very nice talking to you. Second of all, trust me, you've been seen. It just hasn't been by the right person yet. Ah, that's what I like to hear. That, that's a good way to look at it. When you yeah. uh, next talk to Mr. It's Mr. Cavazos, right, David Cavazos? David, yeah. Next time you talk to him, let him know the city center in Champaign, Illinois, which we discussed with him about, you know, looking at maybe getting a promotion up here are in the middle of a complete redesign. They're knocking down the walls between their their sister bar and themselves and expanding the the zone. I think after that gets completed, that'll be the opportunity to bring you guys to Champagne finally. Okay. That sounds like a plan to me. 
And we have we have you know a couple hundred hundred fifty thousand people in town and right uh, and one and a half million market if I remember the radio numbers I saw nice, nice central location for people from all over the place to yeah. come check it out yeah we are we are almost equidistant from St Louis Indy Chicago and we're you know five and a half from Nashville or Memphis or Louisville maybe I'm looking forward to seeing you sometime Camaro yeah one of these days it we'll do like a, a we'll do a road trip to Mattoon for one of these shows sometime the whole JTR team yeah we'll just get the pilot in the van and everything that's but, right. But, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks again, Camaro. We're going to let you go here, but it was awesome talking to you, and we will definitely do it again. Appreciate you guys, man. I had a great time Thank talking you, to you guys. Yes, sir. Have a good evening. All right, you got you too. Yep. All right, uh, Narge. Thanks to the quad father, Camaro Jackson, for joining us. That was awesome. And right, Narge is with us, and now it's time to uh, roll through some of the other more contentious things. Well, uh, Larger born. Can we can we take a can we take a short break, Marco? To uh, that works. Uh, I need I'm to exhausted, my can. so that'll work. That'll work for me. Okay, right, we'll take, we're gonna we're gonna on a, we're gonna on a baby break, folks. We'll be back with you guys in just a minute or two. Love you, Narge. And... <laughs> Don't go to sleep, Narge. All right. I can still hear everybody.
All right, we are back. Uh, Kyle stepped out for a minute to go and... Uh, Him and that filthy fucking habit. I know, right? But uh, Scrappy is ably filling his chair until he returns. Oh, he got up. All right, so we are back. Thanks again to Camaro Jackson for joining us. That was a lot of fun. And uh, if you get a chance, you ought to check him out, whether it's on YouTube or if you can make it to the Zero One show, uh, you will not be disappointed. So thanks again to him. And uh, we got Narge with us. Narge, how you doing, buddy? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think he's muted. He's muted. He's, he's muted. He waved the finger like he's in a sleeper hold. Say, hang Try on. that one, Narge. Can you hear me? There we yes, go. we can. That is a nice shirt. So, you're, you're echoing really bad. Like, I hear you, and then it's repeating right after, so. Oh, That's weird. On. I got you. Is that better? That's better, yep. Uh, my iPad was turned up. I had to turn it down. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, that is a snazzy t-shirt you got on there, Narge. Show it off. Everybody is looking now. Get that at Jump in the Rail. I had people ask about this every time I wear it. They're like, what is that? So Rachel's telling me to disconnect and reconnect. Oh, there's my picture. Look at that. Yeah. yeah you're, you're on screen. Yeah. And uh, coming up is the Narge Cam. <laughs> so we'll, we'll show off the Narge Mania shirt now. Yeah. And we Look are joined, we're joined back again by Kyle. Oh, I don't see him yet. Open your eyeballs. <laughs> he won't be on your Zoom. He'll only be on the stream. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Oh, look out. Holy fuck, he's there. Oh, there you are. That's cool. Look hey, uh, the reason I actually turned that camera on was I was hoping you would bring us the uh, the champion-winning baseball player. Is he around? He's not. He headed across the street to practice his jump shot, actually. so He, never he knows working. that's not in baseball, right? Mark yeah. Gordon, There's no crying or jump shots in baseball. <laughs> How about the merman? Is he there or are they doing the bath and bed thing? Oh, uh, let me see. Hey, Murray, come here. <laughs> we're bringing the merman on. He came down already. Here he comes. They want to know. They want to see you. All of us or just one of us? Hi, to the jump in the Hi, rail. buddy. How there. you doing, buddy? It's Murray. We see you. Can you see us on our cameras? Yeah, I'm there. How, cool? was your, how was your baseball game? Did you do good? Yep. Nice. Medal, huh? Did so you I get a medal? Mm-hmm. Where is it? Do you have it? Oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We'll get that medal in a minute. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in for wrestling speak, we understand that, but we're also a family here, so yes. sometimes we do family moments. San Diego yeah, Padres. jumping the rail. I ordered a couple more shirts today. I got the Narge Mania shirt that Kyle's wearing for Kyler, and uh, I picked up the uh, Ramones inspired jumping the rail shirt that's nice. out there. Nice, nice, nice. So. I would have figured you like the uh, yellow Narge Mania shirt with the uh, with the red. Uh, the yellow is my color, but Rachel Rachel hates washing yellow. The quality, uh, uh, WWE uh, shops quality is terrible. But yeah, yeah here, Mer, go off that. Let's see what you got, little man. What do you got? Whoa! Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that! Yeah. The first of many. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. He said, he said, I'm gonna need a trophy. He said, "I'm gonna put this by yours, Bubby." There you go. <laughs> um, Good job, awesome. Murray. Good job, buddy. <laughs> we love you, kiddo. All right, show him that. Show him the. Show him the hands. Rock and roll. <laughs> you want to curse everybody? Now's your chance. Oh, curse you everybody. Right? Give us the curse. There you go. We got cursed. Oh, yes. Let Baker right. know we missed his curse. Well, the rest of the <laughs> That's usually good luck if he curses us. All right. There we go. Speaking of AEW, did anybody? So he, you mentioned Danhausen. Did you get to see the video Danhausen did with Ego, Mark? Uh, no, uh, not the, yet. The Forbidden Door thing in the back. So him and Ego were in the back at Forbidden Door, some backstage thing, and there was some CGI door. It was purple. <laughs> and Dan Housen was trying to convince Ego to go through the forbidden door. Nice. Uh, Ethan did uh, wanted nothing to do with it, though. Right. But it's pretty funny. I suggest you check it out. Dan Housen's over there knocking on the door. And, <laughs> you know, having a good old time. So, yeah. Right. So Here. we uh, I made a point, Narge, to not bring this up until we knew you were going to be with us. And that is we haven't talked about the pay-per-view yet. So yeah. uh, first off, did it, Kyle, did you watch? You said you didn't watch it live. I uh, took notes. You took notes. Yeah, Kyle brought notes, Narge. He's making us look bad. Notes. So, nope. <laughs> so I guess uh, I'm here, Narge. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm I'm here. I'm in the I'm in the Narge no, dome. Too late. That's true. He's like the he's like the chief on where in the world is. I want to apologize. Everything Kyle said was in the background because his mic was still muted. 
So hang that's the curse. We went backwards. Well, Go ahead, well, say all the shit you your said. Your fault. That's, that's the, right. Say all that's, the shit you had to say. That's I don't the curse. What I just said. <laughs> it's all your fault. That's because Murray cursed you. It is. So forget what Kyle has to say. So Narge, what did you think of the pay per view? From what I saw, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people were worried it was going to be too long. People worried that there was a lot of substitutions. I thought the action was solid. Everything that I saw, and I know from what I read online, people were very happy about it. Uh, the matches that I did get to see were great. I was falling asleep in and out just because it was such a long day with baseball. But really enjoyed Moxley and Tanahashi. The highlights I saw of uh, Orange Cassidy and uh, – Will Ospreay was great. I know people were calling that the match of the night. So I enjoyed both of I those. Am, I am one of those people. That was my favorite match of the I night. I loved his soft kicks. And then when he kicked it in, started doing it for real. Yeah. The crowd just lit up for that. Uh, Narch, that... do you have a drink? I do. I've had plenty for you. Ah, Fiji water. <laughs> Fiji water. You know what's good about that? Fish fuck in it. <laughs> it's delicious. I got Baker it. calls it daddy's water. So. Fish well, sperm. <laughs> you know what my kids call daddy's water? Whatever tequila daddy was holding. <laughs> <laughs> I did think the uh, the four-way match could have been better. I felt kind of bad for Okada and some of those guys. Yeah, that finish. Obviously, Cole got hurt. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Making know. Booker T was saying I told you so the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> for Okada being essentially probably the biggest name in New Japan, it just it felt like he wasn't as big of a deal on this show as he probably should have been. No, so. he, I think he should have been in a single instead of yeah. being lost in the shelf on a multi-man. The one thing I did, well, there were two things I didn't want to have happen, and I don't think either one did. The first one is I did not want Jay White to drop the title two weeks after winning it because, and you know, I've said this till I'm blue in the face, he's the best thing in wrestling right now is Switchblade. And uh, to put the title on him is good because he's all over the place. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that I was worried about, and I actually, I kind of took notes. I made a scorecard of the show. And you're making fun of me. No, no. It's just, uh, I went th- I went through, as each match happened, I wanted to keep track of which matches were won by AEW over New Japan and vice versa. Because I, what I didn't want to see was, I didn't want to see AEW just squash New Japan. That you know what I mean? Like I didn't it. want it to be where they won everything. And by my score, AEW won seven uh, matches over in New Japan, and New Japan won five. So that's actually not a bad ratio. And that's, that's not counting the women, I assume, that's right? Count, you're not counting... That's counting the buy-in. Okay, or you're not counting like Tony and Rosa, right? No, no, that was all AEW. Okay. But why well, thirteen how matches? That, how total. was that match? I, I didn't see that match. How was that? Uh, not bad. Uh, it was. Not great. Like yeah, was, I didn't hear it was great. It wasn't by a bomb burner saw. like it was like it would have been with Rip Baker, but you know, it was a solid match. I'm a, I'm a Tony fan, you know that, so yeah. I, I was curious. That was one match I missed. So yeah, uh, but they they did a good job. But uh, you have her all about fans, don't you? Her only oh, fans? fans. Yeah, that's I, wait, no, wait, wait, no. Wait, wait, I, follow, wait. I follow. I do follow some Twitter page that posts the photos from it. Uh, what was the meme I, I saw? What was yeah. the meme I saw? Bob was really disappointed when he went to OnlyFans and they weren't pictures of fans. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little uh, tipsy right now. Oh, that's all right. So uh, I'm almost there. I mean, I did drink a little bit of tequila. Yeah, but I love you guys. So we, we still like you yeah. too. Oh, like me? Well, screw you. Yeah, that's right. So, you know what? You got to go deeper to get the love, baby. Damn it. I'll get that G-spot. <laughs> this this conversation took a turn. <laughs> it did what? It, let's turn. It, no, it did what? It took a turn. Holy fuck, man. Narge, help him out. What did it do? It jumped the rails. Thank ah. you. Kyle's here. I see what's going on. Kyle's here. It's going this to deserves a drink. Yes. Uh, so let's you know get what? back to the. You know uh... what? Fuck it. <laughs> Give it to me. I bought it. Give it That's to true. Me. Uh, no, let's get give back it, to this. Give it, give it to him, Mark. Give it to him. Marco gave Kyle it. You <laughs> Whatever guys. it was. And but I am. You're really all great. insane. I wouldn't dare to uh, imbibe in the. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm not going to take it, but no. I'll just take alcohol. it. Alcohol. <laughs> take it all alcohol. <laughs> that drunk and stupid is no way to go through life, son. What yeah, Nard, you're that? one to speak. Who's, what Who is, is that? that? Who's that? I can't. See. I can't see. Oh, that's Bushi. It's Bluto. Bluto. Yeah. That's, I had to oh, look at the sweatshirt. There we go. Yeah, I had to read the sweatshirt. That's all like it's blurry. Is that my eyes? That's what I said. 
Yeah, so fat, have, drunk, and stupid is no way to no go, way to through, go through life. There you go. It's, that's it's, one of the quotes. It yes. Have, it Who's that? More five o'clock shadow. That's uh, it's Belushi from uh, Animal House. Oh, is that the one? Yeah, that's okay. one of them. Yeah, when he did right. the zit. Yeah, that's Get one it. of the. I remember oh, this. Yeah. That's, that is a classic movie. Yes. Without a good pro wrestler in it. Narges so. is it. But I believe had John Belushi survived a little longer, like a couple, three more years, about the time wrestling really kind of had its '80s uptake. I guarantee you, Belushi would have been involved somehow. I, he seemed like that kind of guy. I don't think he no. would. I think he would have done more theater. At least bring like the that. Blues Brothers into WWE. I think he'd do. He that. might have made an appearance, yeah. but he wouldn't have wrestled anybody. No, no, no. I'm just saying, been involved at all. Play the harmonica you know? for a theme, right? Just something entrance theme. He hey. just seemed like the kind of guy. Who'd be like, you know what? Fuck it. This is campy and fun, and I'll do it. They could have done it for Nakamura. What do you easily. think, Narge? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I could see it, you know, with the rock and wrestling thing in the 80s with Cindy Lauper and stuff like that. It really depends on right. where Belushi with it. Taking the Blues Brothers, I mean, it really depends. I could, you know, I mean, look, Jack Black did the wrestling thing. So, I mean, who knows, you know? He did Nacho Libre. <laughs> Nacho Libre, to me, is an underrated quality farce. I'm not going to lie. I've never seen it. I enjoy it. We should have a Nacho I, Libre viewing party. I, would I don't like to that. Hey, real quick. Uh, What's that, out. Narge? I said I don't like it. You don't like it? Why is that? Nah, I just I don't I don't think it's funny. I I had a lot of high hopes for it, and I was pretty disappointed when it came out. I, I see. That's probably because you're a wrestling fan, whereas I, coming from the other side, things like holy shit, this is just fucking hilarious. I mean, this is just some weird shit. I will say this: I didn't realize how Jack Silver King was until he played Ramses in that movie. Because he was oh, always yeah, Silver just, King. Yeah, Silver King. Uh, real quick, shout out. Uh, we have a listener in uh, Marvin Moser, the guy that I chatted with at the Zero One show this past weekend. Uh, we had, I think we had an awesome chat. Uh, Is that the one that the was show. on YouTube only? Yeah. Uh, YouTube exclusive video on our YouTube channel. It's me and Menders talking with Marvin after his show uh, in Mattoon. Good job, Marvin. Nice, nice. And, I like uh, the interview. Yeah, it was a good interview. I invite everybody to watch it. Marvin's a great guy. Hopefully, I think there's more to get into with Marvin, so I want to get him on the actual podcast sometime. But that'll uh, hopefully happen down the road sometime. So, Marvin, welcome to the chat. And uh, let's get back into AEW, Narge. AEW. Uh, favorite match on the card, both of you guys? Because uh, Marco didn't watch. From what I saw, like, again, I haven't watched the whole show. I'd, I'd have to say Mox and Tanahashi. It just happened to be the only match I watched the whole thing. So, I liked those spray and Orange Cassidy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dwayne Dwayne Carter, good old Dwayne. Okada and AJ had the best drop kick in the business. I think Jeff Jarrett would have something to say about that, and maybe Bob Holly. But that's just me. I think the right person won that match. Who? Jay White. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with that. Wait, uh, didn't you watch it? I did. Well, he said he thought the right person won the match. Mm-hmm. Now follow me with this. It's this a logic question. So you knew who won the match, and he said it was the right person. So when you said who, I wonder, did you watch the match? Well, I just want to make sure I knew which match he was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, he deserves to be All in right. that spot. He's Oh, absolutely. Hey, did you see the interview afterwards? Yeah. He acted like a total jackass He's the so, whole time, and man. it was fantastic. He's such a good heel. He is. He kept it going. It's like MJF type. Mm-hmm. Just keep on going. Don't sleep. You just sleep. They call him the catalyst of pro wrestling for a reason. Yeah, but he did an awesome job. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the big surprise, guys, and that is the debut of one Claudio Castagnoli, which uh, I was excited to see, uh, just because just having him against Zack Sabre Jr. is uh, worth the price of admission in itself. Absolutely. Go ahead, Narge. Do you have anything to say, or are you busy playing on your phone like a normal <laughs> teenage girl? <laughs> Kyle Kelly like hot. That. Kyle better calm down or he ain't going to be invited back. He's in your hey. chair, too. Darn I'm wearing your shirt. Narge, you can Narge. kiss mine. Normally, you know I would what. agree with you, but he keeps bringing Terramana. This is true. But he's wearing your T-shirt and sitting in your chair, and he's I talking know, he's shit. Doing a heel, he's doing a heel turn <laughs> I got two I words for you. <laughs> he's going to cross out Narge and put Kyle and Sharpie on Kyle Mania. <laughs> Isn't that a South Park thing? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> God damn it, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, we have about... Eight minutes left in this episode, and I think we have a top ten to get to. So, just want to stay on schedule. That's all. We can hurry what? up about this match or whatever. I'll say we can go with it. Go if with we it. go a little bit over, I think it'll be all right. Yes, but, yes. Uh, but let's talk about Claudio in the Blackpool Combat Club. Narge, good idea. 
I like it. I think he's a good fit for it. Um, I think they're maybe at their member capacity now. I know maybe you don't agree and they I should think, bring one more in. But I, I think, think there's I think, room for one more. I know you do. We need but, a female. No. Um, no. Oh, now, Red, Redman, Redman's got a hard on for one guy and one guy only. Now, that sounds really <laughs> weird out of context, Narge. Yeah, but it's true. Uh, I am a big that, fan of one fellow that would be a perfect fit for the Blackpool Combat Club. He who, would if he was in be. better shape. I'm not I'm not trying to body shame him, but I think if he was in better shape. Keith I, Lee. No. No. Who be the only the only guy I would I would I would I would take out Yuda and I'd like to see Garcia in in his spot. Yuda's done well. Yeah. I think Garcia would be better. Um but go ahead, Mark. Who who, who improves the group? It is uh, none other than the great Chris Hero. Some of you might know him as Cassius Ono in NXT, but I know him as the former tag team partner of Claudio Castagnoli in uh, everywhere you can shake a stick at in the Kings of Wrestling. So that would d- just add to the already stacked tag team roster that they have to have the Kings in there. And then, uh, yeah, it's just and his style was perfect because he's a Regal guy also. He trained with Regal a little bit, just like Claudio, just like Danielson and Moxley, so... So he would fit in just fine, I think. Now more than ever, I think it's time uh, for that trios belt. I know they got this all Atlantic thing, and they gave it to Pac. I like that, by the way. They should have already you gotten it. About that? Yeah, Pac. I think Pac deserves it. He's been there since day one, and consistently one of the best guys on the show. Oh, he 100 percent deserves that win. I was hoping like Miro, I would have been okay with, but Pac was the one that I was really pulling for on that. Oh match. yeah, absolutely. I just, I just feel like the trios belt. Is probably needed more than a singles belt at this point, though. I agree. There's with just that. so many groups. So, um, yeah. Tony's and maybe it's coming. I just don't want it central. I just don't want it to be overloaded with titles. That's how WWE felt there for a while. Right. Uh, you know, it was just everybody's got a belt. Everybody's a champion. It, it, it's almost too much. You know, growing up early '90s, WWE had three championships: the world title, the Intercontinental, and the tag belts. Mm-hmm. And you knew the pecking order in each of those groups. Well, they're now about, it's just kind of a hot mess. They're about at WCW level now. They got the world title, their TV championship, and their U.S. championship one right. tag titles. So, uh, I don't know that they need two women's titles. They don't. Uh, I think Jade is ready to go with Thunder Rosa, at least for a feud, not even necessarily to win the title yet. And then, uh, yeah. There are definitely enough uh, trios that they could justify having a trios championship in there. All it's going to take is Jade talking crap about uh, Thunder's personal life, and it'll be match on. Right, right. Or she lets Stokely do the talking. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no. You're in the chair. You're not interrupting. All right. I'm in our chair. I'll just talk whenever I want to. <laughs> I, I will say uh, one more thing about the pay-per-view, and uh, I know Marco's trying to keep us on time here, but... Uh, there was one match I did not like, and that was the six-man tag uh, Bullet Club against Sting, uh, Darby, and Shingo. That was what? It just seemed like a back step for the Bucks. They were being just completely ridiculous like they were in when they were originally in the Bullet Club doing all the flips and the bullshit that Cornette hates. It was an unnecessary match. Yeah. And then Sting coming off the friggin' Titan Tron. These two awesome. for that. that was awesome. I disagree. That part oh, was awesome. Get out of here, old man. Thing, thing taking the super kicks from the Bucks and no selling them. Love it. But the best thing about oh, that like match that was part. Shingo got the pin. I was glad to see that because Shingo's awesome. And I think Shingo could do well to have some sort of a run in AEW just to have a little run in the U.S. I think he could, he could kind of make his name here. Was that the guy with the kind of like the mohawkish, yeah, yeah. The, the Japanese guy on Sting's team had like three or four little mohawk things on the side, or was that somebody else? That's somebody else. I well, think. then forget that. Yeah, Shingo, big muscle up guy. He was their world champion in New Japan for a while. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, then uh, obviously, I I thought it was weird that they were using the pay per view to promote blood and guts. Which is yeah, the end backwards. of the, the end of the pay per view was kind of wonky. That, I kept expecting. Omega or MJF or something as much as they were dragging it out at the end there. Yeah. And for us to get the usual end of dynamite pull apart was kind yeah. of strange. Yeah. They but. didn't need that on a pay-per-view. They should have ended no. that with Moxley in the middle of the ring with the belt. Yeah. Cause didn't they bring negative one in? I didn't see that. Yeah. After words, they brought negative one in. Oh, that might've been after they went off the air. Yeah. That might've been. Yeah. I didn't see that, but, uh, but yeah, they're so look into it, sir. Oh, I'll look into it. <laughs> 
So we got blood and guts on Wednesday, though, Narge, uh, with Claudio in the mix. Now, how do you feel about that match? Man, I, I was already excited before, but I think it's, I mean, it's going to be even better now. You got Claudio, Eddie King. Well, that's what I want to see. Obviously, Kingston and Claudio have history. They yeah. do not like each other. Um, so that'll be interesting. I mean, is is Eddie and his little, you know, Santana and Ortiz, are they going to start feuding with Blackpool Combat Club? Is that is that how this goes down? They implode, essentially. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. Um, be curious to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It's, uh, I think it'll be a fun, uh, chaotic kind of thing. I so. want to see who goes over Blackpool Combat Club because they would be dumb if they did. Because that's a lot of great uh, athletes. I'm pretty sure uh, Jericho's team is going to win this. Just it's War Games 101. You know, heels got to win. But uh, I don't know who's going to take the fall for uh, the Blackpool Combat Club team. Probably Yuta, if I had to guess. And that's why I'm thinking. I think this Kingston Claudio thing is what's going to cause the distraction. Yeah, I would agree with that. But yeah, so overall, pay per view, thumbs up, thumbs down for Forbidden Door. I say thumbs up. Kyle, thumbs up. Yeah, I say thumbs up. I know they're already talking about Forbidden Door Two. I think you posted on the page earlier about them doing it in the yes, the Tokyo. Year, right? Somebody I, suggested I, maybe doing it in Tokyo Dome. My only I, problem with that is the fans over there are not as energetic as the fans here. You know, a lot of those New Japan fan, fans are they're a little more respectful. They're so, all yeah. polite. Plus, uh, hopefully, yeah. if they do by then, they'll have lifted the noise restrictions where the fans can actually cheer. Like they've had it where they can only like clap and stomp their feet. For a long time. <laughs> well, no, just they can't just do anything with her like vocally. Right. right. How about how about this, Mister Khan, the next, whatever this thing's called again, uh, Forbidden oh, Frozen door. Forbidden Door, not Frozen Door, Forbidden Door. Maybe it should be in Champaign, fucking Illinois. You know where like you have roots, or maybe something be in Champaign, Illinois. Something. Nothing. I know. I mean, Jesus. come back. One. It's weird we've only had one show. I thought after the restrictions were lifted, he'd try to be one of the first ones here, to be Tony, honest. Tony so. forgot where he came from. <laughs> He's gone all Hollywood and yeah. But that's neither here nor there. No. Nope. I don't wanna Tony. I don't wanna let my my general opinion of Tony get in the way of what was Just a really good it was Tony. really a pay per view and probably will be a damn good dynamite this Wednesday. I want to get a hug from Tony Khan. He's giving him out like You need a out. you need a big ass fucking hug from him. You know, I've seen a lot of people giving Tony shit about the hug. I'm one of them. It's not the fact that he's hugging, because, you know, I don't mind hugging a buddy, you know, do the old bro hug or whatever. The fact is he was cuddling It's people. called the three, Pat. He was, like, snuggling when he was hugging Oh, people. he was. And they, they posted a picture of him with, like, six or seven other stars. And he's got that same hu- weird hug. Eyes closed. With, uh, but, but, Martha, but, Martha Hart was But let's be real clear hug. about this, okay? I bring you guys in these wrestlers the talent and you make me millions of dollars i would probably do anything shy of sucking your fucking dick if that means a really cordial hug i will give it to you tony is it's a, millions of dollars tony is the head of a major wrestling company he handshake maybe like power hug would be acceptable. yeah but if he really loves he's, his people he's unlike hugging, vince he's unlike hugging. vince i think after break we definitely jumped the rail yeah but the thing is you can't be a businessman and then give somebody a hug like you're wanting them to tell you a bedtime story. But maybe he is. Maybe he wants them to put him to sleep. And I think a lot sleep of our hold. comes from see we, we've seen how we've seen how Vince McMahon acts. Uh, you know, he's very he's aloof. Figure, yeah, he's very aloof. I uh, mean, even with depending DNA, on who it is, some people he'll. By the way, I use the word him. aloof twice he will tonight. Hug the hell out of Undertaker. Undertaker, Man, Austin. You know, I think. Probably. I think Paul Heyman was kind of an affectionate guy too. If you look at some of the ECW stuff, oh, yeah. I mean, he really right cared about well, they those were, guys. They were a family. I'm sure Brett Lauderdale's yeah. got that kind of mentality in GCW. I'm sure you won't mind hugging somebody. I think Tony it just comes across, and maybe that's how his whole family is. It They're huggers, as, you know. I don't know. So, but he he does the fanboy like ten year old meet and greet hug. Like, oh, he's a total fanboy. I think I think the wrestlers like that. I think some probably think they can take advantage of that. MJF. I think he's I think he's proven. <laughs> Yeah, but I think he's proven some of these guys that he brought in, he released. Like, well, I'm not giving you any more money. I mean, Cody, you know, I think Cody wanted more than Tony yeah. put his foot down there, too. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. How about FTR? How about FTR? Uh, New they G- deserve IWGP. it a thousand times over. That's, I think, if my math is right, that was their seventh different World Tag Team Championship. It is. Yep. 
They got a shirt out already about it. It was a FTR <laughs> seven star, I think, is what it's. They said. are that. So damn where does good. that where does that put them in the pantheon of the greatest of all time, Narge, for tag teams? They're an incredible tag team. I just I I don't feel like they've had anything super memorable as far as a feud or anything like that goes. You know what I mean? I always go back to them and American Alpha and NXT, and I think that's kind of their ultimate. That was kind of their big feud for me. I mean, everything yeah. else, it, you know, they kind of run through it's, guys. And it's then month they move to month. On. It's, you know, it's. Yeah, it wasn't like Road Warriors and, you know, the whoever horsemen. they were. And the Dudley Boys. Or, right. And the Hardy yeah. Boys. What about they need, kinds of they need another team better. to battle. Yeah. It seems like uh, uh, Matt might be teasing the heel run again. If you watch Being the Elite, I guess he was talking about how every time he's been on the cusp of tag team glory, Jeff has screwed it up. And uh, so he might be leaning more towards a broken-ish character. Not like Broken Matt, like the old days, but just like a... Delete. Not even Matt. I think it's just a, just a heel character. I want to delete. And maybe Matt, Matt Hardy... Ne- I'm sorry. Matt Hardy needs to retire. He can't walk. He can't move. He's, he's not entertaining anymore. He yeah, hasn't right been now. for a long time. Yeah. I, I, he's kind of put in the background right now. Yeah. So, Nars, before we get into our, uh, our top 10 Tuesday and shut the... Uh, forbidden door so to speak on this episode you got jokes i got jokes i got a ton of <laughs> jokes so uh we started off the show i don't know if you heard talking about john cena you know we had the big 20th anniversary celebration last night and uh i thought it was cool they had some AEW guys uh send videos in for that i uh, saw that yeah that was cool and yeah, i you know i noticed the uh, wwe social media really pushed jerica th- those guys more than some of the bigger names that they have yeah. as far as sharing that so and Here's my question. Do you think that along with AJ showing up on Impact's pay-per-view, is that Stephanie kind of flexing her muscles a little bit, saying let's kind of expand a little bit and do something different? Well, and that's what I'm wondering, because this all seemed to start happening here the last couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I'll be curious. I know you'd mentioned, I kind of heard that briefly, that you know they talked about Triple H being back on NXT. Um, be curious to see how NXT goes tonight. I'll be honest, I haven't watched an episode of NXT in probably two months. I'll catch a match uh, here and there, read it. I haven't but, watched since two point oh. No, I, I try to, that interests me. I try to watch when I can. It's it's a good show. It actually is damn good. I think you'd be good to watch it. But uh, I can attempt. Hmm? I can attempt. You can attempt. I think you'll That's enjoy great. it. There's some uh there's some guys, there's some guys and girls on there that are still learning. It's developmental. It's what it right. is. But there's some damn good talent on that show between Braun. My Breaker only issue. And... Well, I like Braun Breaker. Yeah, yeah. Solo uh, Sokoa is another one. My only issue was Cena last night. All the thanks and all that. You know that he did the thing with Theory beforehand. I told Rach when he he went back on the ramp and acted like he was going to go backstage and come back out. I, I told her so. This is where Theory should come out and just club him right now with the belt. I thought Slam the same. out. And it didn't happen. It just, it kind of fell flat. And that's what the internet said too. It said, oh, that was kind of flat. You know, they did, nothing, nothing came of it. But I just kept, I was like, man, this would be perfect for Theory to come out and lay him out. So especially I, since, it felt like a missed opportunity there. Especially because Theory was coming out later for his, where he was the enforcer for the handicap match. So they could have done that where he was fucking with Lashley and then Cena comes back out and gets his receipt. Right. But that's, you know, that's why we're not booking, I guess. Since we're talking about NXT real quick, mm-hmm. what do you think about Apollo Crews going back to NXT? I like it. It's a good call because he was getting wasted on SmackDown. He I mean, definitely was. He was getting his time, but he wasn't really getting... He wasn't as, he wasn't where as he good as be. he is. But now sitting him down, I think he's going to be running with Breaker for the title on NXT, which I'm all for. That'll be fun to watch. I think it'll be a good match. Uh, Narge, what do you think? Apollo Crews in NXT? I like it. Yeah, I heard not only was he going down, but at some point uh, Aziz is supposed to show up too. So, but yeah. I like it. A cru- Cruz was being wasted. They switched him over with the uh, the accent, and then he dropped all that, which I'm glad he did. Yeah, so, it's kind of back to himself now. Which... Yeah, he wasn't in X- NXT long the first time around, and I felt yeah. like that was a missed opportunity. No, and, to he, him, so. and he said that in a promo. He said there was still a lot of business for him in NXT, and he jumped. Less than a year after he showed up, didn't he? Or was it maybe a little it was, Yeah, within the year, a year and a half, something like that was quick. But, yeah, so I think he's got a lot to accomplish in NXT, and he'll do a lot of good for the young talent that's down there. Oh, absolutely. But. Sorry. No, it's all good. So, you know, it is Tuesday, and you know what that means, Norge. It is uh, It's time for Top 10 Tuesday. And we're sticking with the John Cena theme, uh, our list, and we kind of went into our favorite matches a little bit earlier, me and Kyle. Uh, time out, time out. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, Dwayne asks, 
What do we think of the movie Wrestler? Did we see the movie Wrestler? I like we it. heard him. We'll get there. Oh, I think good. we're I think we're planning a an acting based like wrestlers in movies type of theme There'll in the next few episodes. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So we're doing that. So Dwayne, Hold we will not <laughs> respond tonight because we will talk about it later. That's we're number jumping one. Jumping the gun, Dwayne. And there Dwayne, why are you commenting twice every time? I'm seeing. I only for- see one. He forgot he typed anything. Oh, okay. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. So let's get back on track here. Uh, top 10 Tuesday. Top 10. And the subject this week, uh, greatest John Cena matches. And of course, all purely subjective. But is I'm, it greatest or your favorite? I got greatest on on this. You list. called it greatest. I'm calling it greatest. And okay, so you're assuming that your opinion is fact. It usually is. Okay, good, good. Just making sure. I have a top five. Just making sure. The best part here is we waited for this, Narge. We literally waited for this to make sure you were part of it okay. because I knew you would have responses. Just to okay. see if we can embarrass you. All right, I'm going to run through the the ten. If I come across one that you've got on your list, uh, pipe in, Kyle, and Okey let me know. Dokey. All right, number 10, Backlash 2003, uh, his first title shot against Brock Lesnar. I don't know. It's uh, It was early on in his heel run. When he I don't have a crickets button, but <laughs> if I did. Chirp, 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 chirp. But, but no, it's like his, it was after he turned heel and he was really getting into the rapper gimmick. And See, this I don't was remember him ever really being heel. That's the problem. It wasn't for very long. It was only for about a year. It was a year? I think maybe... about three days for him. No, it was like from... Oh, no, yeah, because he was, was with like uh, Bob Buchanan. And, uh... Was that the Ruthless Aggression period? It was or... after that, yeah. It was, yeah, it was kind of in that Right area. before Thugonomics, or where was uh, No, it was during Thugonomics. At? He really? was doing the Thugonomics. Was that thing. the beginning of Thugonomics, or near the middle, <laughs> yeah. or end? Uh, or... Yes. But it was like he started like in December yes, of 02. <laughs> but he went through, I think, Survivor Series 03 is when he turned babyface. Okay. Well, he had uh, he had Bull Buchanan with him, right? Mm-hmm. And then eventually, B squared. B squared. He turned babyface with the the Carlito angle, right? No, Carlito no, no. stabbed him, or he he turned babyface in 03 when Heyman tried to get him on the Survivor Series team, and he said no. Then he joined Team Angle. Oh, okay. oh that's right. No, nope. yeah, right. the right. the Jesus and Carlito thing was about a year later. I rem- I remember that's that right. okay. where he said no to, the and that's when he got series. over as a babyface. So yeah, so then that this was. Lesnar had just won the belt from Angle at WrestleMania. This was his first title defense. And, uh, yeah, it was a damn solid match. I think Cena surprised a lot of people with it, to be honest with you. And, he was known uh, as the muscle guy, and so was Brock Lesnar at the time. He wasn't really known as the muscle guy, though. He back, wasn't at the he time. He was just the loudmouth rapper kid, you oh. know? <laughs> the new that makes up free freestyle rapping. Yeah, and that's what he was doing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my number 10. Uh, number 9, I've got Last Man Standing of... Against Umaga from the Royal Rumble in 2007. I don't know. Do you remember that one, Narge? Which one from 2007? Uh, yeah, um, uh, Last Man Standing with Umaga. I do, yeah. That was a fun match. That was it's, a good match. I remember Umaga that. I, I'm, no, I'm looking around. these matches up on my phone, Kyle. Thank you. <laughs> but Umaga was so good. That's what you think. Uh, no, Umaga was so good. Yeah. I was interrupting Dingling. Yeah. Oh, no, I got you. But, uh, but yeah, I always enjoy watching Umaga work. He reminded me of just that tradition of the the crazy Samoans, you know, like yeah. off in Sika. I wish he was still around, yeah. Umaga. Oh, he'd still be big Tearing deal right now. Up. Yeah. And then you look at guys nowadays. You got your uh, Jacob Fatu and, uh, you know, obviously the Usos are his nephews and Solo Sokoa. Yeah, that Fat- but, Jacob Fatu's in the NXT, right? No, no. He's What's in, the one in NXT? Solo Sokoa. Okay. That's All the right. Uso's brother. Okay. Jacob, I think, is their cousin. He's in MLW right now. Okay. Sorry, yeah. there's so many. I have uh, a hard it's, it's time. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> it is. All right. So that's my number nine. Number eight, and you're probably this is where you're gonna get mad at me, Narge. Are you ready? Let's go. WrestleMania twenty nine against the Rock. Is that that's the first the, one or the second that's, one? That's the second one. Not even on my list. That's the one where Cena beat him for the belt. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That one wasn't as good as the first one. That's not the one where the Rock tore his anus or whatever it was that he did when he got hurt. <laughs> did he poopy on himself? No, it wasn't that. Ba- it wasn't that bad. It wasn't fecal matters. It was more just torn muscle tearing issues. the anus, huh? Yeah. That happened to Xbox too once. In your anus. Yeah. All right, number <laughs> seven. Uh, this is one you might not know. Uh, against Shawn Michaels, it was the rematch from WrestleMania that they had in England on Monday Night Raw that went about 55 minutes. I think I watched it, but it's not on my top five Right, list. right. But uh, that's when Michaels won. Uh, but yeah, it was, 
I think the longest match I remember seeing on Raw that wasn't an Iron Man match. Well, I think every time Cena wrestled, the person he was wrestling, he dumped his, up his game a little bit more I, to try to match. I definitely the, agree with their that. deal. Yeah, well, it's like I said earlier in the show. I never really saw him have a bad match. No, he would literally work to the opponents what he they can do, and then eventually got to the point where he was doing the Hogan thing, where he doesn't have to do crazy shit, to, right? To get over and have a good match. That weird stunner off the ropes. Yeah, I'm glad he, he kind of retired that. Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, I I appreciate that he's trying to come up with exciting moves and right. stuff, but yeah, it just looked weird. All right, number six, uh, Triple H, WrestleMania 22. Ooh. So good. Uh, Narge? Yeah, that was I was there. That was good. <laughs> Playing on my phone like a girl. He's doing his research. No, but... he, he should have done that earlier and should have been here. Well, he didn't so have I'm gonna access go to the no, list earlier. No, don't defend him, no, Mark. Just... Okay. He's gonna... I, my, son, my, my son comes first. I'm sorry. I wear, I wear a shirt for you, and <laughs> this is what I get. I'm just messing with you, Narge. So, Narge, talk about that match. You were there. So, what was what was that match like for you, for you as a fan, like in attendance? I wasn't, you know, as big into John Cena at the time. I was there for some of the other stuff, but it, I mean, that was an awesome Foley. match. That's the one. Um, if I remember right, I, I, I was there. So, I that they were all dressed like gangsters, right? CM Punk was mm-hmm. one of them. Yeah, they were riding on uh, the on the cars and yeah, and Tommy. Young that was one that. of the coolest entrances I've ever seen. I mean, that was it was it was awesome. Yeah. But the place was electric all night. I mean, Chicago is one of the hottest crowds you can have. Oh, yeah. So, and the buildup for that show, I think 22 kind of gets lost in the shuffle when they talk about things, but there were so many good matches oh, yeah. on that show. Um, the one that stood out for me that was hard to beat was Foley and Edge. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, but Cena, again, like you said, doesn't have a, the guy doesn't have a bad match. It doesn't matter who he's working. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Dwayne had a problem earlier talk, calling him the GOAT. Yeah, and, you know we address that. That, that yeah and that's totally that's up for discussion with everybody and what your you know what your criteria is hey Dwayne, do you at I, least I could, agree tom brady's see, the goat i could easily see john cena as maybe the greatest wrestler of the last decade 20 20 years yeah 20 years. How, about, say 15, how about have his uh 15, for lack 20, of a better yeah. word his generation because i think before yeah. sean retired sean was still better than john cena I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. Sean, I'm gonna. Sean was the man. I got a hot take for you. Triple H was better than Michaels. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll agree with that. But I'm just saying they were both better than yeah, yeah. John Cena. A lot of people throw around the word generational talent these days, and I think that definitely applies to Cena. For Sean was run. good, but I agree with you. I think Triple H's work rate. He just he's another one of those guys that could work with anybody almost. I yeah, was just play. I was just trying to point out that there were better people. Oh yeah, at his, no, I got you. Like, right on, yeah. right on. I'm with you. I mean, I think so. The Rock was. There, uh, with Cena. As far as WWE goes, is Randy Orton, and oh. for the last fifteen years, I mean Randy yeah. Orton, another Absolutely. guy, not a bad match. He put Orton again. I mean, look what he did. The stuff he's done with Riddle yeah. even proves. I mean, that's a character totally outside of his box and made it work. So Didn't good. Cena and Orton like have a lot of matches like as the build they as they built their? They careers. had a long rivalry. Yeah, so I would agree with you. And I think I'd like, like to see him. I'd like to see him do it one more time too. And the thing to remember is. A lot of the best matchups come from people that are really tight in real life, and I think they're best buddies, like, off camera. That's what I've heard. Has Orton ever been given his due? I mean, like, I'll be honest, okay? Wrestling fans know Orton. General fans, like people outside of wrestling, know Cena. Has Orton ever been able to, like, crack that? Would it... It's not the fourth wall. It's a different thing. But crack the... the glass ceiling? The ceiling where people outside of wrestling know him has that happened i don't know i'm asking i don't think it has i mean he's he's, had one movie he's been in a movie right two no or or, uh uh, condemned to no on something to do yeah i think it was he's like he's in in second no matter what you say okay all of his movies are wwe productions yeah he's not exactly like a household name to non-wrestling fans Unless they know who his dad right. is. Right, right. If they know who Cowboy Bob Orton is, they'd know Randy. But Again, Cowboy Bob Orton, the only people that know who he is? They would wrestling because of the cast. And WrestleMania. But I'm saying that yeah, but that's still a wrestling fans cast. thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Cena but, has been outside the game yeah. like elsewhere. Orton has The Rock broken elsewhere. The Hulk mainstream. elsewhere. Right. That's what I was asking. He hasn't oh, seen sure. I know who Orton is. I like yeah. Orton. I like Orton a lot. I yeah. think he's great. And I feel like he's a guy that should get somewhere. I think Orton's happy being a wrestler more than being a because that's a his big big deal. That's blood. his family. That's his more than being a media star. Yeah, he's a third okay. generation guy, so he that makes that's sense. His family crest is 
So I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked Dwayne went to Dwayne Johnson, that is. Oh. Went to me considering uh, his family. Dwayne was, Carter's on the one. What the fuck did I do? Uh, to be fair, though, when uh, he chimed in when we were talking about who we want to wrestle, yep. he's, a, he's a Nia Jax. Well, we knew that. <laughs> and wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, Dwayne, we didn't ask. Number two, we <laughs> knew the answer. Number three, come on, man, be more original. <laughs> we all know right. who you be. Yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Next. <laughs> Next. Number. Number five. Number five. All right, Vengeance. 2003, uh, also heel Cena against The Undertaker. Nope. <laughs> it's all right. Mark's you can be out all the obscure pay-per-views. But these are good matches, though. These are. It's not just the ones with the big build-up or the or the hot feuds. It's the actual matches that I'm focusing on. I, I, I believe, and I don't know shit about that match, but I believe that would have been a cool thing to see. No, oh, I, yeah. I agree, but and it I was, have uh, a different top five. It was Undertaker during the, the big evil days when he was the biker. Right. And yeah. uh, and then Cena was badass. doing the freestyle all the time. American badass. And just a damn good match. Want me to sing it for you, Nard? Uh, please don't. We can't afford the rights. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. If he sings it, I guarantee you, not a single algorithm will match it to anything. I mean, well, I suppose somebody has copyrighted taking this shit at least once. Right. But we could try it. Rolling, rolling, rolling. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, number four. Uh, this is the last one I have from this heel run. Uh, this is from No Mercy 03 against Kurt Angle. And this was, I mean, everybody knows his first, his debut was with Angle on SmackDown. You love that heel run, don't you? It was damn good. So people, Cena versus Angle? Yeah. But the thing is, people forget yeah, about like his heel that. run because it was less than a year long. I mean, Kurt Angle helped make everybody look good this also. Is true. But this was like, I don't know if you, it wouldn't call it a rematch because it was like a year later. But yeah, it was just. You know, talking shit. Angle was doing the rapping. He was freestyling with Cena. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Angle's the uh, Olympic champion guy, right? Yes. Like the real wrestler guy. Like he Greco-Roman his ass into a gold medal, right? Freestyle. Not Greco-Roman. I thought the Olympics was Greco-Roman. There's Greco-Roman wrestling. Then there's freestyle wrestling. He's the fencing guy. He did freestyle. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Now who has jokes? But well no, they, played, Kyle. Well played. <laughs> Kyle, just lubricate him with a third of a bottle of tequila, and he's like fucking alive. Know, right? He's like Don Rickles over here. Or <laughs> I have hair. He has hair. It, yeah, he has, I was going the same level. No, no, no. He has hair. <laughs> Plus, he's not insulting us. He's insulting everybody else. This is true. Don Nard. Rickles would sit here making us feel bad about well, he's existing. Kinda, he's kind of making Dwayne his, uh, Nard. his target. Wake up. <laughs> Nard's had a long day. Don't worry. We're almost done, Narge. I'm wearing your shirt. Wake up. <laughs> hey, Kyle's got attitude. Narge's like, fuck you guys. <laughs> there you go. Wait, Love you, go? Narge. Hey, right. wait a minute. We don't want to see your name, and they don't want to see your bank account either. Quick, <laughs> change that. Who's Menard Gelinas? <laughs> there needs to be an apostrophe between the M and the N. Menard Gelinas. Narge, where'd you go? I'm here. I know I'm, I'm here. No, okay. you're, not. you're part of our logo. <laughs> no, he's gone, man. Oh, I just erased him from the podcast. Okay, bye. Window. All right, let's. Figure, we're dragging this out. I got. I got stuff to do, fellas. All, All right. right. That's right. what I bed. tried to say twenty minutes ago. Yeah. No. All right. Well, we wanted to give you ample time on the show, Narge, because you were a little late coming on. I appreciate it. Just a lot, bit. All right, number three, and I think you. If you don't agree with this one, there's something wrong with you, Kyle. 2017 Royal Rumble against AJ Styles when he won the WWE Championship. Didn't have it on here. <sighs> I actually, you know what? Again, I go with never watched it, but I like AJ Styles. So seeing the Styles, I would like to see that. That would have been a good one. I love one. AJ yes. Styles. I knew as soon as that phenomenal came across when he uh, debuted, mm-hmm. I knew that WWE was changing at that moment, literally because of the style of wrestling right. he had. And but if you put AJ Styles, who I've no never known to hurt anybody, with John Cena who I've never known to hurt anybody. That's going to be a phenomenal match. Now, I'm going to correct you. Uh, there no, were a couple of... Like declawed there, cat claws type things? Nope. P- yeah. Kitten pats? Yeah. So there were a couple cases where AJ did hurt somebody, but it wasn't his doing. It was uh, when he... After his impact run, he was working in Europe and all over the place, and he would do the Styles Clash, but the people he was wrestling didn't know not to tuck their head. Well, that's their so fault. So that caused neck it? problems. So that's the only cases of people getting hurt that yeah. I know of. Is that called the Silence of the Lambs move? <laughs> I think we can I, I could put that as my number six. Yeah, I would definitely recommend watching this match, though. If you and number seen. two is... Don't rush me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get scrappy in here and give you a piece of his mind. Where is he? Where's 
here. Oh, yep. oh, there he is. He's hiding. He's comfy. Yeah. yeah. All right, number two. Man, I'm bored. All right, now I'm really going to worry about you if you don't have this one, Kyle. Uh, TLC match from Unforgiven 2006 with Edge. Nope. All right, I want to see your list. Oh, that's no, what you'll get to see it after I, you. No, 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 no after no, no. you're it hurts, done. It hurts, it hurts to lift my that's arm. That's right. So right. No, 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 no. After, after he's after done. I, after my number one, I want to hear your list. Because if you keep disagreeing with him, and well, Narge always a, does, I want to hear this. This is gonna be classic. Be that's okay if you shit on mine. It really is. But it's gonna be classic. Well, well, go ahead. Paper. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, do you have a drum roll handy, Marco? Number one, <laughs> Money in the Bank, 2011, CM Punk. I have that one as my number one. All right, so you're all right. So we have agreements from these two. Nars, do you agree with that particular number one? Bottom right, left of the logo. Bottom right of the logo. Yeah, bottom right of the logo. Get, run the the one by me one more time. Number Get one, who was right it? Here. Number I one. I can't do the zoom in thing anymore. Either, anymore, I'm distracted. So okay, uh, number one, I had Punk at Money in the Bank. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that was that. One of my favorites. Okay, so, so we have agreement. Yeah. Number one is yeah. John Cena versus CM Punk. Money in the Bank and the year was? 2011. 2011. Yeah. 2011. There we go. The United Center in Chicago. Or Allstate Arena in Chicago. But nice. It's yeah. nice when all three of you agreed on number one. I know, right? Even though I know Kyle disagreed on all the others. And Narge, when he rewatches and listens again, like, oh, fuck that guy. He's wrong all the time. <laughs> then they will watch the matches like, oh, he had a point. I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge like, I don't, I don't remember all the Cena stuff as much as I do Hogan or Flair. Of Cena, of course not. <laughs> while he was kind of Cena, while he was kind of doing his thing, I was more into the UFC at the time, so mm. I wasn't, yeah, super into it. That's fair. All right, Kyle. Now, our go. one of our other listeners, Andrea Lynch, uh-huh. who's the John Cena super fan, will eventually listen to this. She's not listening live; she always listens on the Podbean. So uh, when she does, I'm sure she'll have shit to say about it. Just saying. All right. So Kyle, let's hear Kyle, your Kyle, let's hear uh, your top five, brother. Top five. I didn't I forgot to write down the pay per view or I can probably tell you what it is. It's okay. Just... Two thousand fifteen Kevin Owens. Uh that's a good one. The Elimination Chamber show. I remember that. Okay. That uh, big for five. Owens. It was awesome that Owens got the yeah. win in that one. Uh two thousand five JBL. Uh, there were a couple. There was WrestleMania and then there was Judgment Day. I think it was Judgment Day if I looked it up right. The I Quit match? It might have been WrestleMania. The I Quit match or the one where he won the belt from him? The one where he won the belt. That's WrestleMania. Okay. Well done. Well done. And shut up, Encyclopedia. <laughs> Two, <laughs> 2000, great. 2000, it's fucking phenomenal. 2015, Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins in a triple threat. That was the Royal Rumble. Yep. I knew that one. That Damn it. One. What were the years of your first three choices? 1505 and 15. Okay, only one, two 15s. I thought there were three. I was like, oh, shit. No, what we heard 15s. is he was only not in a coma in 2015. No. 2013, Daniel Bryan. Uh, SummerSlam. Yep. yep. And then 2011, CM Punk. You know what? It's not a bad. There's not a bad match in the bunch. That's a solid list. I just, you know. We all have our own opinions. Yeah. You, you seem to favor late, later Cena, like the 2010 Cena. I... Like, like the popularity age Cena. He was popular like, the whole time. Like yeah, but but by then he had reached this like I mean, let's face it, he reached twenty fifteen. But by twenty fifteen, he had reached oh Hollywood cares. Yeah, he was popularity. To, he was almost to rock. Right, 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 exactly. Two thousand five. That's true. <laughs> right. He but, was a, he was a rap star in two thousand five. Yeah. Though. See, here's my thing: is I was a bigger <laughs> fan of Thugonomics because of the promos. Mm-hmm. But then later on, I was a bigger fan of his wrestling mm-hmm. as opposed to his promos. I wasn't a big fan of the rapping shtick. I mean, I just thought they were funny. Uh, you don't like rapping Cena? Cena? Not really. What did he go by? Was it John Cena it still? Or did he have Cena. like a rap name? It was always John Cena. Okay. I was, thought, his I thought nickname it was corny. Juan Cena. What's that, Narge? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was corny too. I, you know, I right. mean, he did he did well for what he did. From what I understand, that character came about because he was rapping. I think it was on a plane, and Stephanie McMahon was on a bus. It. No, uh, a bus Pritchard, Pritchard heard him. It was Pritchard, and then he showed it to Vince. It uh, I, I don't. But uh, I well, that's what Pritchard says. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so good to be so important to the business you work for, whatever it is, that when you do some off the wall, totally bullshit, bullshit, they still go, hey, wait a minute, that's pretty marketable. We should use that. They're like, yep, yeah. you're that guy. That also happened when Vince saw Kurgan dance at a party once. 
Oh my God! Did you really just reference Kurgan? I reference dancing? damn right. I reference Kurgan. Oh my uh, God! I will say this though, Narch. Marco's over here and deer John, in the headlights have no John Cena better yep. rapper than Max Caster, and you cannot change my mind on that. But who who do you think is the greatest of all time, Narge? I think he fell asleep. Narge, Narge, wake up! Oh no, his uh. Oh, he hung up. His thing died. Okay. Anyway. Well, now he just messaged me. His uh, Zoom died. Right. Do okay. we have enough time to see who you think your greatest of all time is? Or did we do this earlier? We've done this on a show before. Uh, well, I wasn't here. But uh, I, I said uh, I'd have to put it between Undertaker and Triple H. Uh, okay. Probably just Undertaker for the sake of argument. You? Okay. Uh, I'd probably go with the Undertaker also because it didn't. the championships did not matter to him. No. He wanted to make everything good. It didn't matter if it was a buried alive match. Didn't matter if it was Hell in a Cell. All he cared about was the business, and that's what he did. Because we're jumping the rail. That's right. But can I go through just some quick uh, accomplishments for John Cena? Because I wrote them down. Sure. Sixteen-time world champ. Right. Five-time U.S. champ. Mm-hmm. Four-time tag team champ. Mm-hmm. Two-time Royal Rumble winner. Uh, Money in the Bank winner, and a 10-time Slammy winner, nice. and three times it was Superstar of the Year. Okay. So that's a damn good resume. I think, yeah, there's no... I still don't think his... he's the greatest of all time, No, but he needs to be in the top five. He's in the sure. discussion. Yeah. At very least top 10. Yeah. I'd probably have him top 10 more than top five, but yeah, he's definitely in the discussion. I mean, but... Undertaker, Triple H, Flair, Flair Sean, obviously. Flair. Eddie Guerrero, I put up there. Eddie Guerrero, definitely. Owen, Brett, you know. Well, oh, Owen absolutely. more than Brett. I mean, there's so many great wrestlers in the past and present that it's mm-hmm. hard to... Just loop them all into one. Yeah, it's yeah. so hard. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that was a uh, a good list. Uh, good list from you, Kyle. Not the same as I would have gone. But, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think this was a, a fun show. Thanks again to Camaro Jackson for joining us today. It Thank was, you, Camaro. Uh, it was a good chat. Thanks to Kyle Reed for sitting in with us. Uh, it was a great in, time, guys. Filling Narge's chair in his T-shirt and uh, bringing the quips and whatnot. Uh, thanks to Scrappy for not barking his head off in the uh, studio yeah, while we were doing this. You're sleeping. <laughs> no, he's awake. He's just no, biding his time. He's just chilling back as there soon going, as okay, some, as when soon you as motherfuckers moves, leave, I can hang out with Dad. He could come give me a back rub again. As soon as somebody moves, he's going to start barking. Yep. But... Until uh, we don't have a guest lined up for next uh, episode, so we'll probably just do the usual talking about wrestling and bullshitting, and maybe even do the uh, maybe maybe start our movie discussion. Marco, what do you think? I think that uh, between now and the uh, magical one year anniversary show, mm-hmm. we should do that once because okay. that's actually one place I actually know something. Now, here's the bad part. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, I may need you to help me figure out all the movies I've seen when pro wrestlers involved because i know cena i know rock i know batista mm-hmm. i know other guys like hogan. uh yeah hogan and other guys i know because they were elevated to the level of me knowing yep. but i'm sure there are many more pro wrestlers at a lower level or yep. maybe not as Dolph not Ziggler. as much name recognition involved and i'm sure narge can help out with that also yeah. but Miz. i think and Amen, i and bro. i want to hear from you guys too you guys are listening all whatever you guys are thank um, you fans wrestling movies with wrestler starring. Okay, so Dwayne, you talked about the wrestler with Mickey yeah. Rourke. Let's be honest, he's an actor. So there were wrestlers in the movie though. Yes, there were. But Randy Savage is in Spider Man. That's true. There you go. So yeah, we're not looking for movies about wrestling necessarily. We're looking, right. for, we're looking for movies, movies wrestlers starring wrestlers or co starring wrestlers. If wrestlers are, are like uh uh what do they call them? Extras or bit pieces in the thing, don't I want to hear about it. I do because I may not have known they were in the movie. I may have seen a movie with some major actors and 43 pro wrestlers are back there, and I didn't know it. We want to hear, but I do think not next episode, which is... Hey, actually, uh, I was wrong. We do have a guest coming up. The 12th. Up. Oh, look, 12th. we have a guest. Now we have a guest. Look at this motherfucker. Let me double check. The, it's an up-and-comer. Uh, actually, God damn it, woman. They actually shit reached together. out to us about it. Oh. Is that guy that hit us up first? Yeah. The guy out of, like, Mississippi or something, I think? Yeah, and I- I need to find the. Word. I do not remember the details, but we did. We had a very, very new, up and coming wrestler who's been working in some smaller promotions in his area, 
and his uh, his team reached out to us said, you know what? Y'all want to know what it's like starting the fuck out? Like Camaro and all these guys in zero one and stuff, they're at a, a certain level, right? And then you got the next level. Then you got the next level. And then you got WWE and AEW. This guy is starting at the, I would say, the level that yeah. nobody knows exists. And that's yeah. awesome because yeah. we get to hear him. And I hope we interview him, like, periodically to yeah. see how he climbs. So, so, it's, uh, so it's not the next episode. But it is on July 26th, uh, we have the guy's name is Sean Joyce. He goes by the name Universal Flux. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. And he will be joining us uh, on the Zoom. And we'll It'll be a blast. Him. Yeah, it should be fun because we don't because he'll he's an up-and-comer. Nobody really knows a lot about him. Right. But hopefully we can help him get his name out. Uh, I know David Cavazos listens to this. Maybe we can get him a booking up here for Zero One, possibly. Now, let's be clear. After tonight, David Cavazos may or may not listen because who knows? Well, I mean, we may have said something wrong. We don't know. I don't think I may have said something wrong. I behaved. That's it. See, I I was good. I was trying to be nice and not blame Kyle. (laughs) You can blame me. I don't care. Hey, Kyle. God damn it, Kyle. No, no. I'll tell you what. If yeah, God damn it, Kyle. Uh, What was the other one, though? They killed Kenny, but we're going to call you Kenny from now on. No, we can't do that. That's your. uh, That's my uncle. Yeah, that's the one. It has been discussed from henceforth. He is to be known as Reedzilla. 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 There may be a t shirt coming. Maybe. I want to thank Jumping the Rail for having me on. Oh, sure thing, man. Jumping the Rail would like to thank you for having us for having us drinking all night. Holy crap, we almost went through the whole bottle, dude. No, we did You're not welcome. almost go through the whole bottle. Uh-oh. We did. Hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let me fix a button or two. Here we go. That one. Y'all see me, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Nope, can't see you. This is what's left of the bottle. <laughs> it's a John Cena podcast. I yeah, can't see you. This started as a, a brand new bottle when we started this episode. You are welcome. Hang on. Uh, I, oh, careful. wow. <laughs> yep. So, I will Tip raise my bottle to our listening public. This is Redman from Marco and Kyle. Have a good one. We'll see you in two weeks. Jump the rail.